Folks, raise your glasses up high and then stick them directly up your butt because this season of Vanderpump Rules is like taking a big glass to the butt. Like, my God, this is a full recap of Episode 7, Vanderpump Rules Season 11. Help me, dear Lord. Uh, Listen, angry right off the bat. Uh, I want to tell you right off the bat as well, you may not agree with some of my opinions about this show. I am am tired of this show. I am tired of the discourse. I am tired of me. This show is, I mean, it's beyond ridiculous. My God. And yeah, we'll talk about Joe. By the way, I think Joe almost kind of said, poor Joe, man. Hey, Joe, you got on TV. That's the positive thing, right? If you consider TV positive. But Joe is some kind of like female Mowgli from the Jungle Book. I mean, I truly think, yeah, they call you like, George's like, are you a tall gray? Would you tell me if you're an alien? I don't even think she's an alien. I think she literally might have been raised in a jungle. And we are seeing the after effects. Like, you know, those movies where they take like a jungle kid and then they put them, uh, you know, like they, they put them in a put them in a society. That's what Joe is. I mean, top to bottom, this is a mess of a show. I mean, this is just a mess of a show. We will try to make some, some funnies out of certain things, but I am so angry. And the thing is, it makes you question yourself. It makes you question everything. Like at this point, I'm like, wait a sec, maybe cheating isn't that bad. Maybe, maybe, Maybe Ariana is to play. Maybe that's a total joke. Ariana's, but that's where the show the show's got you. Everybody's so gung-ho, like at the end of last season of like Tom's a monster, like the cast members. <laughs> now Sheena's like, I miss my friendship with Tom. I love Sheena, but my God. And Lala, by the way, where is your social media post? Uh, coming at people for coming down on Sheena so hard. It's been a rough week for her. I mean, please, we need you to stand up for her like Ariana stood up for her. Come on. How are you guys doing? Are you as frustrated as I am? Listen, this, this show, is, <laughs> show is ridiculously bad, but at the same time, it's so bad, it's good. I mean, it's so bad. It's I've watched this episode three times now. I feel like I'm some part of like i'm like it's like getting waterboarded i just feel like i'm doing this to torture myself it's like putting needles in my eye over and over again and this lisa vanderpump oh well, that's the other thing right off the bat guys everybody in the cast anybody in the cast listening there's producers of the show you are not producers on the show stop being producers on the show and the audience listening we have producers on the show we, I, I know we're all like geniuses now in terms of how these shows are put together, but like, I'm so tired of people. Oh, Lala's producing. She's just, she's doing her job. No, that's not her job. My God. I love the fact that like we find new ways to enjoy this show. And one of those new ways is saying, guys, this isn't reality. It's a reality show. We're not supposed to, the, the actual show should be Ariana forced to be in a closed room with Tom Sandoval. That should be the show. That's not reality, folks. That's not reality. And yes, Lala probably in that scene with Ariana, which we'll talk about towards the beginning of this episode, when she's like, you can't do that, Ariana. Yeah, she fucking can do that. And also, I know Lala was probably saying you can't do that because it's not good for the show. But fuck the show. This was this person's real life. Everybody, you know, that contingent of the audience is still wants to believe this is some like, you know, uh, psyop that this was all put together, all fake, you know, like Sheena learned her lines and all of this stuff. No, this really happened to her. And I I just hate that I come here week after week going, guys, would you fucking be in a room by yourself for any amount of time and do a scene with somebody that did this for seven months to you? And no, it is like a bigger kick in the ass on top of all of that. Is that watching some of these doo-doo birds dodo birds <laughs> like the, you know they're backing down and going you know what tom pretty good guy actually pretty now you know what uh, tom was pretty miserable it's like they're rewriting history they're rewriting everything that they said before they're rewriting their actions and i i just i think that's frustrating as a viewer it's funny i mean it really shows you 11 seasons in 
By the way, parents listening to this right now, make them watch this season of Vanderpump Rules. I think these are important life lessons. Nothing about life, but just about don't go on reality television. And if you do, do it like for three seasons and then be done with it. Do not, by no means, should you be doing reality television for this long. It is so not healthy. Everybody is just doing things for the camera, doing the, like, it, 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 I mean, like, I'm going to Lala's office. You know, I'm talking about rebranding conversations. Oh, you guys. Like, at this point, let's bring Randall Emmett back. Bring him back. Fuck it. All bets are off. Everybody should be cool with everything. Everybody should be cool with everything. In fact, I hope producers do that. I hope producers just take everybody's worst ex on or off the show and just put them on the show at some point. Just put them on the show. Let's get Miami girl back in there. Let's get Laura Lee. Let's get Jackson. Let's throw them all in. We'll throw them in a big cage and they'll all wrestle it out the entire season. And Lisa Vanderpump will be like, oh my God, it's lovely. It's like Nick Lane. Come look. Oh, Nick Lane designed a perfect set for the cage match between these people and their exes. It's beautiful. It looks like steampunk with deer horns everywhere. Oh, I love it. Oh, do you? Do you, do you love it, hippie? Yes, hippie loves it. As you can hear, I'm truly on my last tether of reality right now. And we knew this would happen. We knew that, I mean, like this, is, and I got to, I got to stop going on Facebook. Facebook is that thing that I think I can handle. Cause I'm like, yeah, I just need a little jolt of anger. And then you go on there, you go into some like Facebook group and it's like, Ariana is a piece of shit. And you see that it has 5,000 likes and you're like, holy shit. Like, you know, and it's not even about Ariana at that point. It's like how you can think so differently than a group of people, how you can think so differently. And my thing is, it's just like, I, I just want people to admit why, you know, and why they're watching this show. Like if, it were, if we're watching for messes, we've got a great mess in Tom Sandoval, right? But then don't make him a God for being a mess. Don't make him a God and try to make reasons why you should like him. Um, and then try to put Ariana down in some way to make yourself feel better about liking Tom. Like just say, I love a fucking huge mess. And that guy is the biggest mess out of all of them. And also how does Schwartz and Tom, they, they seem to have these fawning, the weirdest people around them that just fawn over them. Like Joe and Billy Lee both have that same goofy hypnotized look when they're around these guys. Like, oh my God, it's, Tom's in a cold plunge. Oh, Schwartz, finally took me to sir i've made it they just like i mean they look it, it, it looks like fucking like jack nichols in front row at the oscars like you know just like looking up no jack, that's an old joke. jack front row at a lakers game looking at the laker girls just like a huge smile on his face that's what like billy d g uh billy, billy joe <laughs> i'm fully losing my mind they just they look like they've won some sort of contest, you know, like they won like a, you know, come backstage and meet one direction. Like they look like those kind of people that are like the biggest fans in the world. And they finally get to see the cameras. They're like, oh, the lights, they're everywhere. This is cool. Oh, oh my God. I saw DJ James Kennedy. Oh my God. It's real. It's real. Like, holy balls. And the funniest thing is that Joe's going on. Joe's going out there where Schwartz and Joe have literally hooked up and slept together. And Joe, Joe Joe's in it. That, like she, it presented to her that like her and Schwartz are going to wind up together at some point and it's just not going to happen. And it is like, that's like the ballad of Joe. Like, I mean, listen, we can make fun of her all we want, but I feel slightly bad for her because she is in this really weird position of truly loving this man. But you got to remember also with Joe, how she got on this show. Joe was like really, really, really good friends with Kristen Doty. And if you listen, I was on Doty's pod and she was filling me in on a little bit about this uh, a while back. And she said, uh, yeah, they broke up. And then like, 
I never heard from Joe again. Like, never heard from Joe again. Like, Joe literally dropped Kristen for Schwartz. I mean, Joe even sent Katie Maloney a text message back in the day saying, girl, you're so strong. Yeah, Justin Bieber. Yay. And then literally went and like just palled up, shacked up, walked the dogs with Schwartz, everything. And finally, we get the admission, the thing that we already all, that's the thing too. And it's a little Kyle Richards here. It's like the things we already know as an audience, and this is a little bit like life, you warm up to a hard truth. Uh, you know, like you might have accepted it, but you know, other people won't accept it. Schwartz has finally let us know like, oh, yeah, um, yeah we, we did see each other's privates. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, we did, you know, <laughs> it's wild. And by the way, if we're going to do this, if we're going to keep doing this Vanderpump rules, I'm sorry. Those are the conversations I want to have. Not, not where he tells us. I want to have the conversation where Schwartz sits down with Joe and goes, um, I'd rather not like see your private parts anymore. Is that cool with you? Like, I'd like to like play video games and talk about aliens and kind of be like the biggest Joe Rogan fans out there. But like, maybe just maybe, um, let's not see each other's privates anymore. Um, would you be cool with that? Cause like literally you are the perfect person in the world. And I know, you know, that like, those are the conversations I want to hear and see because you know, they have them. Like, where was that conversation of Schwartz going, I've got to draw some boundaries. Um, you know, I was talking to my plants today and I don't know, like, I want you to be cool with it because I do want you in my life. But like I said, I'd prefer not to see your butthole. Hey, folks, welcome to So Bad It's Good with Ryan Bailey. If you like this, please rate it five stars on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Okay, that's a little opening warm up just to get some initial anger out. And yeah, we have a lot of good TV out there. I, lo I watched the Love is Blind reunion tonight, which I'm maybe I'll do a Patreon episode on that because it was actually, you know, I watched the Beverly Hills reunion first, which I'll recap on Friday. And I thought the Beverly Hills reunion was severely lacking. And then I went and watched the Love is Blind finale reunion. And I was like, compared to the Beverly Hills reunion, it looked like Citizen Kane. I was like, holy shit. This is like, look at this. Wow. Everybody's here. Nobody went to the hospital. Like, it, it's great. Whew, but Beverly Hills, not great. And then I watched tonight's episode of Survivor. Survivor, you guys, if you get so angry at Bravo shows, first off, that makes me wildly immature. But if you do, Survivor is a good it's a good cleanse your palate kind of show. Like it's great. And I, I, I do. And maybe you guys feel the same way now at this point, we've lost them all. No more. The traitors, no more. Love is blind. We're done with Beverly Hills. We Vanderpump rules. Now we have our mid season trailer, which means holy shit. That actually made me happy because we're seven episodes in. If that's a mid season trailer, it means it's only going to be a 14 episode season. Hells to the yeah. They are filming the reunion, I believe, this Friday or Saturday, the Vanderpump Rules reunion. I think probably Saturday, but I'm so curious. And, and by the way, this is something everybody listened to. You heard it here first. I don't have any information, but this is my thought. Uh, Ariana's on Broadway. So is she going to be zooming into the reunion? Like, that's the other thing. And I feel kind of bad for her again because she's going to get so much shit of like, oh, she can do fake Tom. <laughs> like the way we just bitch and moan about anything Ariana does now. And she was the one that was cheated on. And also she's out there actually doing a job. So I am curious. I listen. I hate when people zoom into things. It reminds me of the pandemic, which, by the way, do you realize we're at the four year anniversary of the old pandemic. Isn't that crazy? That was such a horrible time. Like I got to, I got to really focus on this show and I met so many of you guys through it, but what a sad, horrible time, really, truly worst time of my life. This last, I mean, lot, most of this last four years have been some of the worst moments of my literal life, but man, that pandemic sucked. I mean, for all of us, but I really, really sucked. But yeah, like I do, like, it just makes me think about how many Zoom reunions there were. We got so used to even just anything with news. It was all Zoom. We still haven't come back from that on newscasts. Do you, do you like anybody now that guests on like MSNBC, Fox News, it always seems to be like Zoom. And every time it just makes, it bums me out. But anyways, they are filming the reunion. So I wonder how they're going to work around Ariana. And I 
fear that it will be some sort of Zoom setup. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't think they're, I, I know they're not flying everybody else. I do know that for a fact. They're not flying the rest of the cast to New York. So I'm curious about that. And it's just going to be another thing that people bitch and moan about her uh, about. So anyways, let's get into the recap. We'll have a lot of things to say throughout. And uh, and then afterwards, if there's time, we'll go <laughs> <laughs> we'll do the mid-season trailer and I still got to talk about the Valley trailer. I told you I saw that first episode of the Valley and it's pretty good. It really is. It's pretty good. It's the, the, but Oh, also I keep telling you guys this watch the Vanderpump rules after show on Peacock. There was a 30 minute uh, episode for this episode and they started integrating some of the Valley cast members into it. So you had Jax talking about Katie Maloney in this episode saying like, Oh yeah, I've heard rumors that Jax is still out there cheating. And he's like, Katie Maloney is always just out. Like he always sounds like a pro wrestler. Like, I'll tell you something, brother. Katie Maloney is always out there on her phone. Just trying to destroy lives, brother. And she's going to go down in the octagon. And the sad thing is like, you have Tom and Tom like surrounding him in the interview and they, they've all done like the same things that Jax has done. And everybody's just kind of like quiet watching Jax freak out. But it's classic jacks. It's like when Billy Billy Joel sings Piano Man. You're like, holy shit. Like, I've heard this song to death, but still, sometimes, you know, it hits the right heart feels. You know, you're like, man, a master doing what he does best. <laughs> Seeing that he doesn't cheat. <laughs> I'm severe. I'm losing. Are you guys even enjoying this? <laughs> I'm completely. I'm alone in the dark right now. This is. Oh, oh my God. Okay. Should we just get it? Let's just get it. Let's rip this bandaid off. Oh, wait. One more thing before we start. I wanted, I wrote this note down. I just read it <clears throat> right now. I'm just thinking of this because of Survivor is that Team Tom, they have the numbers right now. And what I mean by that is <clears throat> I am not worried like i'm worried about this show regardless i've been worried about this show for the last six years but they have the numbers in the sense of unfortunately reality television is about the biggest mess usually unless you have a beautiful show like love on the spectrum and then it's just glorious all the way through and you root for most everybody on the show and they give you something to root for those people all amazing characters Really, just the best pieces of humanity. You really need to watch Love on the Spectrum if you don't on Netflix. Okay, but Team Tom, they're the biggest mess, and they have the numbers. And you have the outskirts now being Ariana and Katie Maloney. And those are two people that, you know, unfortunately, when you don't mix them in with the group, sometimes they can get really just massive amounts of hate for just standing by their own standards, like actually standing on something, actually trying to live a decent life. They seem like they have some kind of moral code or they they've grown into having some sort of moral code, but also not the most bombastic in terms of being on TV because they were usually just great interacting with the insanity. And when they take themselves out of that insanity, which is the best for their mental health, but when they take themselves out of the insanity, it is almost like a ding against them. And I hate that fucking fact. Like, you know, it's like, of course I would want them in there just to point out how stupid everybody is being. But if they do, you know, not seclude themselves, but, you know, do these scenes, like even Katie Maloney, I think she comes alive in those group scenes, you know, when she actually kind of does stand up to Lala and does point out the fact that Tom Sandoval was a huge hindrance in her own relationship. Katie Maloney isn't out there being a sycophant to Ariana. She has her own bones to pick, and those are fucking fruitful bones, you know? But right now, Team Tom has the numbers because you got Tom, Tom, DJ James Kennedy, who's made pseudo peace with Sandoval, even though on the after show, he completely makes fun of Sandoval. So that's why I say you watch it because you get their feelings. And those things are filmed like a, like a month or so ago or a couple of weeks ago, as opposed to when they filmed this five months ago. So you see that he still finds Tom ridiculous. But in this season, you have DJ James Kennedy, Tom, Tom, Sheena, Lala, Brock. 
uh, Allie, but Allie is the one of the other people that don't have their head up their ass, but she's with DJ James Kennedy. So she's in those group scenarios. She's in those group settings. So that to me, I call it team Tom because it's like, that's the mess. And you can almost see, and what's frustrating is that you can see a world in which if you were producing this show and this isn't a slam against the producers at all, but if you were, you're trying to find a path forward, right? Not in just this season, but beyond. You're trying to find that path forward. And unfortunately, that's the path forward is with that group of knickknacks. Um, I don't even know what that word means, but it means doofuses, uh, even though I like some of them. But that's the thing. So Ariana and Katie, what I what I fear is that them standing up for who they are as people, and especially something that is so fresh, new, and raw for Ariana, is potentially pushing them further and further away from this show. But at the same time, I completely agree with what they're doing. I wouldn't say, ah, Ariana, huge mistake. You should have done scenes with Tom. No, that's not real. Fuck that. And also that's what, you know, we see in the mid season trailer, Ariana running away from Tom and the very, the season finale at the very end, when they have this party in San Francisco for Kyle Chan, you see her walking out because they're trying to get her. And she's like, no, I'm not going to do it because I think there is something this soon after of like, no, you are not going to capture me on film doing a scene where you're like, come on, dude, I've been journaling so hard about this. And I realize at the end of the day, Rachel's an asshole for not returning my call from that facility. Can you help me with that, Ariana? Like, you know, hearing that bullshit that he spouts off to this day. But at the same time, I'm not ignorant enough. To, like, that is the show right now is that group of mess. And so what I was trying to figure out from a production angle of how do you keep Ariana and Katie in it? You know, how do you keep that? Because something about her obviously going through a very tough time, uh, you know, you didn't have the Rachel element come back, which almost would have served Katie and Ariana better, even though I don't think they would end up doing scenes with her, but it would have served her better because it would have been somebody else with a very clear and strong voice at that point that this dude has been pulling such a huge fast one for so long and said so much insane stuff. And then also on top of it on team Tom, you have the dark overlord, Lisa Vanderpump, who is like, listen, at the end of the day, even though I try to guilt women all the time, I do want to remind you, I hate them. I hate Ariana. What a bad person, Sheena. Oh my God. She did Dancing with the Stars. That's your dream. Even though she admits Lisa Vanderpump did Dancing with the Stars, you know? It is set like Lisa Vanderpump is literally just like, Tom, a plan is working, our evil plan. <laughs> And we've made it so Jax can come back on our screens. It's all coming exactly to plan. And Lisa, did you hear Jax is going back to TV? I can't believe that. Oh. Where's Ken, by the way? Is Ken okay? I haven't seen him in a couple of episodes. First, you take Peter Madrill from us. Now we just get a little glimpses of Ken. Oh, in the jacuzzi, help me. Lisa made him let me out of the jacuzzi. I can't believe that. Help me. I mean, like. It's just a mess. Okay, that's that's one thought. And just more to that thought about Lala and Sheener are just doing their job. They're just doing their jobs. I think Lala thinks she is doing her job. I think, like I said, Lala eventually should be on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills or she should be producing reality TV. I think she's got a producer's mind, but I do not think she should be producing within the show. Now, Sheena, I don't think she's doing her job. I think this is legitimately how Sheena's mind works. I think she is one raw nerve, one raw emotion. And like I said many times, I think if you get in her face, she is going to be apt to believe you no matter what. Even if she is being completely lied to, she and also, yes, she loves things that are about herself. She loves when she gets somebody's undivided attention, when somebody says, oh my God, dude, I've, I've been thinking nothing but you, dude. You're the hardest part of this whole thing. Like that is music to Sheena's ears. I mean, and some of us are like that in our lives. We want, because we didn't get enough attention somewhere in life. We want to feel like the stars. And especially when you are on a show that have made stars out of some of these people, you want to, you want that. And I don't think it's necessarily bad but I also don't think it's fake. I think this is really how she is. Lala, on the other hand, I think she is, you know, I think at the end of the day, she realizes that these people are goofs. 
but she's turning into a goof trying to produce shit like trying to produce things instead of like uh, okay okay that's enough we're gonna get into it now we're gonna get this episode is entitled entitled written in the stars Ooh, because ali does ali dally she does uh their birth charts and stuff so that's where the stars comes from and this is the uh, description the cable company gives us the group why don't they just call it the gang this this group of friends this gang of pals the group begins to mend their friendships. Can we get a little more specific on that? Lala expresses her desire to become a mother again. Those are the two sentences they give us. Let us begin. We start off, the sun is shining. We have this really weird song. It's like, clap your hands to the music. Clap your hands now. DJ gonna play your favorite beat. Wanna play your favorite boo. And then we go over to uh, DJ James Kennedy's house and alley with Hippie the dog coming out of the pool. And Hippie's just so happy. He's just. <laughs> the pool! Amazing! And he jumps out of the pool, and DJ James Kennedy's like, It's quite an upgrade, isn't it? The house and everything. What do you think, huh? Quite an upgrade from that little studio apartment where you had to watch uh, Tom Sandoval put his little ding a ling in your mom. Ha <laughs> ha. I win. I win. So we have that scene, and then we scoot on over. We see, like, the beach for some reason, even though there's no scene at the beach. We go over to Sheena and Brock's little place in Marina Del Rey, and Brock's like, you want a little bright of this toast? Come on, you want a little? Come on, Summer, you got to take a bite. And then Summer Moon is pushing Sheena uh, off a little beanbag, and she's like, I want you to fall down. I want you to fall down. And she's like, she wants me to fall down. Well, Summer Moon, I have good news for you. Your mom has fallen down this season, and I don't know if she can get back up. Uh, she is having a tough season. Uh, we then scoot on over. <laughs> we scoot on over to the backyard of Tom and Ariana's house, and Sandoval's like, What's up, dude? I'm back. And poor Anne, the assistant, she's like, ah, You're back. <laughs> you're, you're back. He's like, I survived, dude. I survived. And he comes in like all chipper. And she's like, uh, I, sorry, I'm going to go see the Barbie movie later. That's where we are in time, folks. The Barbie movie had just come out. Think back to me where you were during the Barbie movie. I don't even really, I, well, I was in Arizona, but I mean, that's where we are. And she, you could just tell Anne is already tense. She's like, oh God, he's back. Oh, uh, I got to go see the Barbie movie. I might see Oppenheimer too. And he, you know, he just comes like, oh dude, I got to tell you all about this, Anne. Fuck yeah. Oh, she's like, I didn't think you'd see me in my Barbie outfit because she's in pink. And he's like, that, that's great, dude. And she's like, how was it? And he's like, dude, I walked into the airport and I was like, Sheena, Sheena was like, hey, hey, I'm over here. And then Ariana's upstairs on her computers and, and she's like, oh my God, Tom Sandoval, I hear him. It's like the Wicked Witch of the West. I would love to click, you know, my heels three times and go home. But it turns out I am home. Now downstairs, Tom Sandoval is like, it's, it's, it's Ariana here. And she's like, yes, she is here, Tom. Yes. Um, and Tom keeps, you know, revealing to Anne, who's just trying to cut open boxes. She's just like, I'll do anything. I, I'm just going to look down. I just don't want to make eye contact. And Sandoval keeps continuing. He's like, dude, it was a very interesting trip. It was, dude. She's like, how was it? She's like, um, and we flash back to all of the fights and arguments that he had with the cast in the Tahoe trip. And he's like, you know, <laughs> Uh, they had resolutions, Anne. I wasn't like, I can't with this person. All in all, he says in a talking head, I think the childhood trip was pretty good, dude. Like the stench of the scandal is starting to wear off. People are humanizing me again. I feel optimistic. I mean, that's the thing too, is the stench of the scandal is wearing off. But then the stench of just who Tom is right now remains. You know what I'm saying? Like, not to get too deep with it, it's like, yes, the scandal is wearing off, but Tom's reaction to his own scandal remains. And that's the hard part. 
is like, that's what we're all seeing from all the interviews he's doing, the podcasts. So it's not just the show. Like if none of those interviews had happened, we would almost be a little more kind of like, well, yeah, that stench is wearing off, but we know all the shit he said. Rachel has done so many podcasts at this point, each revealing another little nugget of information about shit he told her through this period of time. So all of this stuff, when you add it into this, makes all of this kind of just so watered down in a way. And then he's like, uh, well, okay, dude, I'm going to go unpack my clothes and uh, unpack my feelings. And Andy's like, privately? And he's like, yeah, dude, I'm going to go journal, dude. This guy in his journal, Dear diary, dude, I just saw Anne. She was dressed like a goof to go see the Barbie movie. <laughs> I think she wanted to talk to me for a long time, but I had to get back to you, my journal. Yeah, dude, it was crazy. I got on the plane and then we the plane flew. How does planes actually fly? Have you ever thought about that journal? It's crazy. Anyways, I'm going to go whack off. Talk to you later, journal. Tom. <laughs> so nice. <laughs> Now we cut over to Lisa's house. I got to tell you, when Lisa's in this show, it just causes problems at this point. Uh, you really do know it's the Barbie movie, though, because Sheena comes in in just an all pink, just tight pink workout outfit. Um, and Lisa's uh, training her new dog. He's like, I'm doing donut training. I'm teaching a donut to hate women like I do and only love men. <laughs> Did you know she trained these donuts? I don't know how to call her eat that. So Lisa's like, how was it? How was Chaho? And Sheena's like, um, honestly, Lisa, the day after we saw you in Tahoe, that was the most emotionally draining day I've ever had in this group. Think about that. Think about how many emotionally draining things that have been in this group. This is the most emotionally draining thing that's ever been in this group. She cried more in Tahoe than she's ever cried. In fact, Tahoe reported that they had uh, two inches of rainfall when the Vanderpump kids went to Tahoe. That's how much Sheena cried in Tahoe. But also, I want to remind you, the last time we saw Sheena over at Lisa's Villa Rosa was with Lala. And uh, this is how funny the show is. Sheena and Lala came in hot. Like, no, nah, fuck Tom Sandoval. They had their heads like, you know, this is how it is. Ariana. And then Lisa was like, uh, but what if uh, you love Tom and you hate Ariana? Have we ever thought about that? It, almost like a shitty magician. Just like, look at me. You hate Ariana. She's taken everything for you. Jobs that you were never up for. She's taken them from you. And Tom, a good man, a good singer, ripped. <laughs> Great friends, Billy Lee, Joe, all good people that you want to be a part of. And now... Sheena's back there to be like, Lisa, Lisa, look how good I've done. Look how good I've done. I've taken everything that you've said to heart. Uh, but she's like, I, you know, I cried so much. My eyelashes were dry and hurt. I've literally ripped skin off of my eyes. And she's like, why? I'm going through stages of grief with Sandoval. What, what do you mean? Grief, grief of the that you had? Yes, Lisa, of the friendship. And you feel you can't have it because Ariana's going to be upset. And she was like, it's just hard when I try to tell her how I'm feeling when it comes to Sandoval. Yes. She literally said, I don't want to hear about it. And. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Guys, talk to me like I'm a kid because I basically am. Help me understand. And this is like, I really do hope that I do Sheena's podcast again, because now I have a list of questions that I'm just going to pepper Sheena with because I am so curious. And I know she understands these. Like, I know if I could just talk to her that I could get some clarity on these things that are confusing me so badly. Um, okay. So the thing is, Ariana, like she won't, she, okay, let's, she won't talk to me about my feelings for Sandoval. Why would you expect of all people, Ariana, to hold your hand through your emotional journey with Tom Sandoval? Why is it important for Ariana, of all people, to walk you through your emotions on Sandoval? Go to your therapist. Go to Lisa. Go to Lala. Go to Brock. Go to all of these people. Don't choose the one person and put the, you know, the, the, the opinion that matters most 
the person that doesn't want to hear people talk about Sandoval right now. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? And then why, since she doesn't do that, would you think that makes her a bad friend? Like, honestly, I know that there is multiple times that Sheena, we've seen her have multiple breakups. We've seen her have a marriage that is broken up. Ariana has talked her through all of those relationships. But it's it, it just that if Sheena, you know, was with Mike Shea and then Ariana dated Mike Shea, which would just be now I'm kind of thinking that would have been an interesting storyline. But if that happened and then Ariana wanted to talk to Sheena about her relationship with Mike Shea, Sheena would be like, what the fuck are you doing? Like that was a dude I was married to. I don't want to have these conversations right now. Please don't bring this to me. Like, I don't see why this is not getting through to her. And what's upsetting is that I can understand that Sheena, for whatever reason, truly believes these things. But I expect like the adults in the room, Lisa Vanderpump, to be like, you're really thinking about this in a very weird way. Maybe that's why we don't see Ken, because he'd come in like, are you fucking kidding me? Why would you ever talk to Ariana about Tom? I can't believe that. What are you doing? What? Like what nobody would think that was a like I this is the 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 like I feel like they're 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 they've been poisoned or something. Like their their minds have been poisoned because in fact, like if this would ever happen, you would think Sheena would be like, God, no, I would never talk to Ariana about this. No, like that, that that's she doesn't need to worry about my relationship with Tom Sandoval right now after what. And this is like this is like I feel like the show is just a gigantic gaslighting of all of us. And I hate that word dearly, but it truly is this gaslighting thing where like by the end, you're like, am I crazy? Am I the one? Like, should we all just be talking? Like, I mean, everybody take their take their issues with Tom and like where they're at with him to Ariana. Wouldn't Ariana at this point just want to make sure that like you talk about like your own friendships with each other or maybe even the Barbie movie or how Summer Moon's doing or how you and Brock are doing or did you kiss Schwartz in Vegas, which we haven't even gotten to that storyline yet. So that's the stuff that I'm just so confused. That's That's where some of the anger creeps in. Anyways, in a talking head, she's like, I've done everything I can to be ride or die for Ariana, but is it not enough still? I'm afraid to express how I feel because it's not about me. It's never been about me. It's only about her. So I'm struggling with having any conversation with her lately because I feel like I'm not valid in my feelings. It's not about not being valid in your feelings, Sheena. It's just the wrong person to validate those feelings. It's just completely the wrong person. And it's not always been about Ariana. In fact, it's famously been not about Ariana for so long. And this is what happens when it finally is about her. Like, this is how people like fucking freak out and create this narrative in their head that it's always been about Ariana. Like, fuck, you could have made an argument back then, back in the day that it was always about uh, Stassi or it was always about like Jax or something that like, you could have made certain arguments like that. But Ariana was always kind of like, like an outlier in certain ways. Like she would remove herself from so many things. So the fact that it's all about her, it's just, it's never been that way. It, like it, if I'm watching like a completely different show, let me know. But like Ariana seemed to be there through all of the boyfriends, the, 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 the Shea relationship, all of this stuff when it was like clearly about Sheena or being there for Sheena. And like this, like this thing, and, and it's not like they haven't gotten things from this. I mean, all of their podcasts shot up the charts, merch was sold, like this breed, breed, like it breeds a second life into everybody's career on this show. I mean, like Uber One commercials, everything, you know, uh, Sheena's Schmirnoff contract, all of this stuff. Like you, I mean, this is like, think about where you were during the pandemic, Sheena, and where you are now. And yes, part of that is because you are who you are and we do celebrate it. We speak your name. God, I love good as gold. Unironically, I think it's a bop, but this kind of stuff is wild. It's a whirlwind of attention for Ariana, but this is like also the, the blowback she gets 
for that whirlwind of attention. So it's basically like a shit sandwich, but the middle piece is filled with like good jobs for Ariana. But on one side, you got the Tom relationship and the betrayal there. And now you have friends questioning who Ariana is to begin with because she got that little middle piece, the meat of having good jobs that actually, and also somebody that is actually willing to stand by doing something for their own mental health. Uh, and you guys will argue with me till kingdom come about, oh, it's a show. That's what they signed up for. Da, da, da. Ariana from the very beginning, from the end of last season said, I will not be doing scenes with Tom Sandoval. This is not something that she tricked production. It's a, I told you from the beginning, I knew production probably, probably thought, well, I bet we'll be able to break her down at some point. Come on. She can't really care about herself that much. We'll be able to get her at some point. And I told you at the beginning, I, like, I think half the, the back half of the season will just be like them trying to put scenarios together where she accidentally has to bump into Tom and see like if they can trap her in a room with them or something. Like that's how ridiculous it seems like it might get. But this is like the thing is that like, you know, she people like Sheena do make production's job that much easier because she's creating conflict that shouldn't be there. But it's like real conflict in Sheena's head. And Ariana's just out there trying to live her life, trying to like literally pick up the pieces. And the other argument I oh, I still get that's very frustrating is that like, oh, she she doesn't feel pain. She's moved on. You know, Sheena's the one feeling pain. She's moved on with her pain. She landed on her feet. She's got a new dude. Like, guys. Come on, we know how the world we know how the world works. Come on, we do at this point. Listen, I've had some of the greatest career highlights that I've ever had in my life the last year. I've also had the worst moments of all time in my life this year, the same year. Do you think just because this is doing good or I have this over there or I have that over there, do you think it doesn't take away from that pain? Do you think, I mean, like, that's the thing It's like, we all have that too, is that you just get up, you keep going, you put one foot in front of the other. Like I, I, it's, it's so frustrating. And I just, I don't know who's talking Sheena through this stuff and I'm trying to see her point. But then when you throw Lala on top of that and Lisa, it becomes this cacophony of bullshit. Uh, Lisa's like, she's dealing with this whirlwind of attention. And then she was like, yeah, well, a few weeks ago, I picked up Dan at the airport and he said, oh, I'm here for the announcement on Wednesday. And it's like, what announcement? And he goes dancing with the stars. And Lisa's face is like, oh. and she was like, I was like, oh, and Lisa puts her hand like head in her hands and goes, oh, my God. Oh, my God. She was like, oh, oh, oh. Oh my God. And Lisa's like, you've told me that's, uh, that's what you want more than anything. Yes. You said you want that more than anything. She's like, uh-huh. She was like, this year I started taking dance class. I was preparing in case, you know, I did get it. And in a talking head, she's like, I am so happy for her, but it's like, I can be happy for her and sad for me at the same time. And she's like, to Lisa, it was kind of a punch to the gut for sure. And a talking head, and like she's like, and good for her. She's come such a long way from being my backup dancer. And we flash back to 2012 at the show at the Roxy, I believe, on Sunset. And then she gives one of those like Sheena smiles, like huh, I showed her. <laughs> I'm like, what are we? Oh my god! Here's the deal. And 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 Ariana was on Watch What Happens Live with the brilliant John Oliver, who I watch every week on Last Week Tonight. And my God, I love that man. Uh, and he loves Bravo, and it's it's great. Um, God, he's a dream guest one day. But you know, Andy asked her about this moment, the Dancing with the Stars, and Ariana said, "Well, listen, I kind of think it's like what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Like you know, the fact that I'm on there maybe opens it up a little more to people like Sheena." And this is the thing, because I, I, I truly adore Sheena, but she wasn't in contention for Dancing with the Stars. She has been a fan of Dancing with the Stars for a long time. She's been at a lot of things. In fact, she was actually kicked out of Dancing with the Stars. She was on like a no allowed list because she brought in a weed pen one time to Dancing with the Stars. But I believe Teresa Giudici got her in when Teresa was competing on Dancing with the Stars. But she was on like a, a no fly list for a while. But the thing is, Sheena wasn't in contention for this job. The way these shows work, just like the like there's stunt casting. There's like who's in the news right now. 
You know, that's why they usually get like the bachelorette, you know, or the bachelor or who's like, you know, you usually have those token people that are reality stars in the moment in people's mouths right now. And, you know, that wasn't Sheena, but that's not Ariana's fault. And also, I really do believe there is a world in which Sheena does get on Dancing with the Stars one day. Like, I do believe there's a world in which that happens. I don't think this shit kind of helps. Like, and I, and I feel sad because you're eventually forcing somebody from dancing with the stars to be like, we never had Sheena on the casting list at all. Like, I don't want Sheena to be embarrassed by this kind of attitude towards that. Like, I do want to hear more from Sheena's perspective of why, why were you preparing for dancing with the stars? Did they tell you that? In fact, like she went and supported Ariana so much, you know, Ariana put her on her guest list and that had to be good for Sheena just to be around. You know, so I, I would think like, be, I mean, keep this bullshit to yourself. But I, I think at the same time, this is why essentially Sheena's a fascinating reality show character because she says the things that we would never fucking say in those situations because it is just like a smack to the head. You're like, what are you talking? And Lisa egging this on of, like, oh my God, I can't believe it. You've always wanted that. And then Lisa goes, if your friendship with Ariana is as great as you tell me, huh? then you should be able to tell her how you feel. And she's like, I try, Lisa. I, she shuts me down. Well, so you want a relationship where you're just supporting somebody and you're devastated? And then Sheena goes, that's the story of my life. Change it then, my dear girl. In a talking head, Lisa's like, all I want for Sheena is at some point to be able to say exactly what she's thinking. There's always this push and pull and her trying to make everybody happy, but it's okay to say, you know what? It really hurt my feelings. What's wrong with that? I don't know. Not that I would ever say it. Uh -huh. So even Lisa in the scenes, like I would never fucking do it. It's because it's idiotic, but I will. I'll encourage her to do it. Yes, I will. I'll, I will encourage her to do it. What a dork. But that that's the frustration here is that like, Lisa's right though. There is this constant push pull in Sheena and also say what you're feeling of like, you hurt my feelings. Well, like, Wait a sec. So now Tom hurt Sheena's feelings and Ariana hurt Sheena's feelings. But Lisa, you're more upset about Ariana hurting her feelings more than Tom just because Sheena's like actually on your wagon being nice to Tom again. Like make it make sense. Anyway, Sheena's like, uh, hey, anyways, we're doing this like uh, girls astrology night at Allie's house because of course we are. That's what we do. We look into the stars. It's up to you what you do, dear girl. And she's like, yeah. So Lisa's like, maybe that's where you should have this conversation. Anyways, we get the horrible soundtrack on. It's like, I'm shining. I'm shining. And Lala and Ariana are walking. Uh, I believe this is Melrose Boulevard. They're at Be Bright Coffee. They're getting a little pick-me-up, a little coffee. And Ariana gets a golden latte and a toasted island latte for Lala. And Ariana she pays together and she, she picks it up and Lala's like, cause you're balling, which by the way, this is the kind of bullshit that Lala will use against her of like, you think you're better than me? You paid for my coffee. How dare you? Like this will be used against her at the reunion or some shit like that. It's like at this point, Ariana should be paranoid. Anything that she does with these people. Cause it'll like hit the press, make a storyline secretly. They're all judging her. And Ariana is literally just like, I'm just trying to drink some oat milk here. So they sit down and Ariana is sharing with Lala, the photo shoot for her single AF cocktail book and said, you know, and, and Lala's like, Oh, Ariana. Oh, and little Lala's like, Oh, Ariana. Yeah. And we see, uh, you know, there's one where she's like angry in a photo shoot. And she's like, this was so cool because I don't usually allow myself to get angry. And then, of course, the editors do an editing troll where they show all of these scenes of Ariana getting angry through the years, which I mean, I don't really seem to remember Ariana for the angry moments, but also the I don't give a fuck about Raquel was a very deserved thing. But also, I just think it's so funny, like in the same token, if you're looking at like Lala's, I mean, Lala, I do know for angry outbursts. I'm like, if we did one for Lala's angry outbursts, it would like it would it would take the rest of the season to cover. Anyways, they get the coffees. They're chatting. Uh, everything's lovely. Talking about everything. And 
Ariana's like, what happened during the trip? Sheena called us the next day on the boat. She was crying. I was like, why, you know, why is everybody crying? And I was like, the trip was weird, dude. I've never seen Shishu this upset ever. Like she was a shell of a person. I think her whole thing is if I go somewhere where he's around, can I be able to enjoy myself and have fun with him on a very surface level? And Ari's like, I'm not asking her to fucking fight him when she sees him. I'm not asking her to really do anything. And Lola's like, I think that's where she's at. Like the internet was ripping her apart for, for that fucking photo. And we see that photo and Lola's like, yeah. And you didn't come to her defense at all. And Ari, and I was like, well, I mean, listen, I, 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 I'm not going to like actually do that and like make it become a headline and stuff. And Lola's like, even for your friend, even for your friend, you couldn't tell all these people who are your stands to say like, I love Sheena. She's a great friend. Everyone knock it off. And Ari's like, I don't know. I guess I could. And Lola's like, I think that would have been nice. And I'm talking ahead. Lala's like, from what I've seen from Ariana, she's constantly on social media, just a scrolling and you can't even make a post because you just don't want to be in the mix. You step out of your house and you're in the fucking mix. You lift your finger and you're in the fucking mix. This girl was so upset over Ariana, what these two people did to you. And I was like, yeah. And later on caught a fucking restraining order over it. I think she needs some closure in all this. She needs you to say, I love you. You will always be my best friend. And whatever you need to do to heal, please know that you can do that. Is that something that you can say to her? And Ari's like, well, I, I can obviously tell her I love her because I do, but my position has not changed that he doesn't get any sort of access to my life via me or via mutual friends. I'm not down with him like being around. You know, I can quietly remove myself from situations that make me uncomfortable, but that but that's but that's exactly what she's nervous about. Okay, Ariana says. You can't be that way, Ariana. You can't shut down like this. And Ariana's like, it's not me shutting down. It's me doing everything that's going to work for me. I'm not the person to come to with the Sandoval sympathy train. But she lost one of her best friends, Ariana. So did I. Two of them. And Ariana talking head says, I'm trying to be compassionate, but I also know that Sheena is very easily walked all over. So he knows that Sheena is the easiest route to go to try to get people back in his corner. And he knows that if he can get Sheena to come around, Lala to come around, James, and then Ali Dally, then he can ice me out of the friend group. And Lala's like, she's very nervous that she will no longer have you as a friend if she is able to heal from this. Ariana's like, I want her to be happy and do what works for her so that she is happy. But I also need to do what works for me to make me happy as well. And Lala's like, oh, somebody not agreeing with me. Okay, let's go, folks. Let's go. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Oh, no, we woke hippie. Oh, no, no, no. Hippie is fine. I'm going to lower my voice. Okay. Let's, let's, I mean, are we, have we all lost our minds? Have we all lost our minds? You can't do that, Ariana. No, she can do that. That's what she should be doing. Now, if you want to make that argument, like I said earlier, that Lala is actually talking about like production of the production of the show. You can't do that, Ariana. You need to film like, no, like little, why, why is it so like, first off, like Ariana, literally that's like bully behavior of like, you can't fucking do that for your friend post something. Why don't you call the casting directors of Dancing with the Stars too and put in a good word? You can't do that for your friend Sheena. She caught a restraining order for you. Listen, I think Sheena fucking, like, I really do think she is. I mean, having said all of this, I do think she is an amazing friend. I do think she deeply, deeply loves Ariana. But Sheena caught a restraining order because of what Rachel says Sheena did. Let's also be very clear about that. Unless something comes out in the court documents where Ariana was like, you fucking kill her tonight. You throw her up. And, and by the way, Sheena says, didn't make a fist, didn't hit her, can't do it, nails, all of that jazz. I shoved her, didn't hit her. But Sheena did that. Sheena did that because she was pissed as a friend. That wasn't orders from Ariana. But like, that's another thing of just like, like kind of just guilt tripping. It's like Lisa Vanderpump behavior of like, you need to do this. Come on. But this is ridiculous. And once again, now the argument now is between women instead of who it should be between a fucking goofball named Tom Sandoval. 
Like the fact that we are having these heavier conversations, because by the way, when Tom does, he can't even understand what he fucking says. Like, oh, duh, 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 duh. I don't want to do, 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 do. Oh, do, fuck, duh, uh, uh. And then he just buys you something. Like, this is ridiculous. And it's so frustrating. Lala is such a, you know, up with women kind of person that even she, in retrospect, has to see how weird this comes out of her mouth. Like, are you fucking kidding me? If like, I, I, this is like, and I, I went on Instagram and I said this and like everybody had their opinions about, you know, things that I said, but like, listen, if Rand, like we saw how she was with Randall Emmett. Now, yes, Randall Emmett was only on the show because of Lala, but like, let's say the show wanted to keep Randall just as a friend, just as a, just as a friend of like, let's get some pickleball scenes with Schwartz or Tom because people don't want to film with him. Do you think in your damn minds that there would be a world in which fucking Lala would ever even set foot and she would raise holy hell about anybody that did those scenes like she raised holy hell at the beginning of last season with Tom Schwartz because he did play pickleball with him. And by the way, you know what? I would be so on Lala's side. I'd be like, fuck Randall. Are you fucking kidding me after what he did? Fuck no. And it wouldn't be like, la, 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 for the good of the show. You got to. For the good of the show. Come on. Come on. No. No. That's why it's such a ridiculous request. Like, please, will you champion Sheena for being buddies with your friend again? And by the way, it's not just hanging around, Tom. Like, literally, they're fucking doing, like, crust fall exercises and, like, doing mirror mirror work and, like, Tears are being shed. This isn't just fucking hanging around. Like they're doing like deep child work, you know, like go back to when you were three years old, get in touch with that three-year-old and now get in touch with the three-year-old Tom Sandoval. You are never going to see that man alive again. How does that make you feel? Like weirdly emotionally manipulative scenes happening to get people on Tom Sandoval's side. But at the end of the day, it's fucking Ariana. It's Ariana's fault. Da, 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 da. And like I said, this isn't about Tom. Anybody can hang out with Tom. Like, honestly, we see that it's happening. No, it's not not happening. It is happening all over the place. It is a virus that has caught hold on season 11 of Vanderpump Rules. But you then, at the same time, if you're going to let that happen, you also better fucking respect Ariana, who has never changed her tune. It's never been a, we'll see, maybe, and then at the last minute, sorry, pulling out. No, she's, and that's what's so frustrating. It's always the people that actually do things that are right for them that usually catch the most flack. Or they assume because they've got a lot of fans all of a sudden that everything is hunky-dory. Sorry, Kathy Hilton, like to use your term. But you know what I'm saying? Like, they all of a sudden think that equates to just everything going well. Like, God, you all got shit. Send it to Daryl. You all got shit out of this. Like, it's so frustrating because it now falls on Ariana's shoulder. You got to post something. You got to stand up. The Taylor army is coming for Sheena. Like Sheena, like I, I was listening to clips, one of my favorite Instagram accounts by wig, hello drama, love that account, um, you know, really does a good job of like tracking things. And also one of my other favorite, favorite accounts, Vanderpod recaps on Instagram that I love as well. Cause I don't listen to these podcasts, but I get to hear clips on their accounts and I read recaps on Vanderpod pod recaps as well. And it's just it's interesting. Like I was re listening to something about Lala going, Oh, sh I feel bad for Sheena. She can just never win with the audience. And I'm like, but La, La, you got to understand sometimes why. Like, you know, guys, if you met Sheena in person, you'd fucking love her. She's fun, great, like, you know, like funny, all this shit. But then how she comes off on the show, there is just always that little thing. There's always that little extra add on at the end of like, uh, well, she was my backup dancer. Like, you don't need that. You don't need the read. It just makes sometimes her look bad. But at the same time, I mean, she's throwing herself on a grenade. So we have something to yell about. But I also think that's sometimes just internally her. So anyways, it's just very frustrating because there's no like Lala does what Lala wants to do. But when other people do what they want to do, then it's like verboten. Then it's like, well, we got a problem. Oh, she's just not getting it. She's not a team player. She doesn't get it. But like Tom Sandoval really is kind of like skating by skating through this thing. And he's not, he still hasn't even fucking explained anything in a clear enough manner. And yet you have somebody here very clearly saying 
very clearly, couldn't say it clear. I'm doing what I need to do to protect me. He is not going to get access to me via my friends, via the group, via the, like, I mean, just couldn't be clearer about this. Exactly how Lala was in her relationship with Randall. And we all respected that. We hopped on board, except for Schwartz, who's just in love with pickleball, um, you know, and Joe. But I don't know, that's, that scene really just set me off. Because it was like, you get to dictate. And then later on, Lisa says something about, you know, having another baby. I'm like, no, you can't do that. Sorry, Lisa, you're not going to change my mind. That's how firm Lala is. And we respect that. You know, like, well, I'm not going to mess with her. But with Ariana, we can fuck with her. We can fuck with her. Like, I just don't see, I, I just find that, like, that's the frustrating part about these shows is you just see how hypocritical all of the behavior is. And, you know, and it's funny at the same time, but man, it's ridiculous. It gets your blood boiling. And she paid for Lolo's coffee. Come on. Where's the Venmo money for that? Please. We cut to commercial. We come back. Christina Kelly is back. Katie's friend, Christina Kelly is back. So I'm like, oh, shit. Ariana must not be able to make it. So we got Christina Kelly. They're at this restaurant, like the, the roof of this restaurant. They get drinks. Uh, and uh, we got Shishu coming to meet them and Lala. So Lala comes in. She's wearing all like a denim, like a skirt denim thing. Sheena comes in. So it's like a four person scene. I already get like bad vibes because like this could this could go bad. This could go bad because they're coming off the Tahoe trip. Katie's coming off something about her stuff. So they do their food orders, their drink orders. Lala gets oysters, aphrodisiac. So Sheena lets us know that Summer Moon broke her arm, broke her arm. And I was like, is there a way I can blame Tom Sandoval for this? No. Turns out she was straddling the couch for a second and she lost her balance. I hope Tom Sandoval was the first. He's like, can I sign Summer Moon's cast first, please? Please. It's imperative that I... I had beef with her and I need, I need to make sure everything's cool. Anyway, Summer Moon uh, cast is pink. They were doing the colors and Sheena was like, that's not going to coordinate with her outfits. No. Sheena and I talking to her says, it, this is just my luck. I am so terrified to let anyone else take care of my kid. God forbid something happened to her. And in front of my eyes, I watch my child break her arm. And, you know, that, that's got to be. And remember, Christina Kelly has a new kid as well. But I think that actually, in a sense, it's horrible that Summer Moon broke her arm. But do you think about it like away from all the Sandoval shit? That's that in some way is potentially good for Sheena because those are very real things in her head about trusting her kid. You know, and just sometimes that people just go through experiences that sometimes we are going to fall down, scrape our knees. And those are going to be important lessons for the kid, for the parents, you know, those kind of things. And maybe in some way it helps Sheena relax in some ways going, okay, everything's all right. Shit happens. I know I'm the best parent that I possibly can be, but listen, it even happens on my watch. I mean, hopefully it, it calmed her down a, a little bit. Um, you know, I, I hope so. I'm sorry. I got to go back to that last scene again. I'm still angry about it. Sorry, folks. Uh, listen, two more things. You know, the, talking about Sheena's, you know, Sheena needs to heal, Lola said. And it's like, yeah, I got whatever you need to heal. <laughs> you know, like the, part of this conversation is, hey, Ariana, where are you on your healing journey? I know everything looks good, but deep down, are you OK? Are you, are you finding it hard to trust in the world? Like, I, honestly, how are you? But like, yes, whatever she needs to do to heal. But I do still think it is a little silly in the fact that Tom didn't mainly do this to Sheena. It affected Sheena. Sheena got rocked from this. And I think, you know, her confidence in her own relationship potentially got shaken. If you take the mid season trailer into account, but he did this to Ariana. He did this to Ariana. And I feel like since Ariana won't film the, with Tom, we are almost getting this kind of like body switching thing where Sheena now has taken over the spot of Ariana. So we're having these scenes of like Tom deeply apologized to Sheena and Sheena deeply hear Tom when it's like, is Sheena taking the place of Ariana for a second? Were these supposed to be Ariana scenes and Sheena's just filling that void? And the other thing that I took from that scene is guys, and especially you women out there, don't and and listen. This is something I'm learning from this show. Do not and kids, if you're listening, and also if you like, let the kids listen to this part. Bring them in. Don't do things for your own self worth. Okay. Don't do things that work for you. Lala's very selfless. Always has been. She only does things for other people. 
not nothing for herself. Um, but yeah, don't, you know, and also remember at the end of the day, men are the people that should be championed, that should be protected, that should be forgiven, right? Men, not women, men do not. And you women do not do things for your own self-worth. That is very bad. I just find it wild that Lala is all of a sudden the spokesperson for some of these things, like because she speaks with such a clear, strong voice that it's like almost reminds me of a politician where I'm like, do you believe this shit? Like you're saying it like you believe this, like it's gospel. Okay. So anyways, back to this, back to this scene. So they're all gathered around talking about mommy stuff. Uh, she was like, yeah, I was in Tahoe with Tom Sandoval. Sandoval did this spiritual healing, this meditation, she tells the gang. And for the first time since all this happened, I know without a shadow of a doubt, those were genuine tears. And Katie makes this face like everybody just farted at the table at the same time. She's like, Shanna makes a Joe face. Like, I'm a tall gray. I'm Joe. I'm a tall gray. Um, so Katie makes this face where it's already, but I love, I just still love that Sheena was like, I've seen so many tears in my day. And finally that man had real tears. I had them tested at the lab and wouldn't you know it, saline tears, salty, emotional, lovely. Um, and then, uh, Katie's like, or I think it was Christina is like, well, do you think he's more sad about losing your friendship? than actually being out of the relationship with Ariana. And she's like, honestly, yeah, because he was so unhappy with her for so long. And then Katie's like, well, why do you think Ariana stayed? And she's like, well, you don't really know until you're in it. You can't judge because, you know, and then Lala's like, yeah, people stay all the time. And then Sheena's like, yeah, look at Jackson, Brittany. And I'm like, whoa, we got a little Valley ad in the middle of this. Look at Jackson, Brittany. Now this feels like a real scene, but uh, you could, weirdly enough, the Valley premieres next week. And we are now bringing up Jackson, Brittany in a scene. So I don't know if that was like, Hey, could you slip Jackson, Brittany into this scene in some way? Cause they're coming on the old boob tube next week. But isn't that wild? That Christina Kelly's like, uh, do you think he's more upset about like, you know, the, the loss of Ariana or the loss of you? And she's like, honestly, me, look at me. It's crazy, right? It's ad- obviously me. And the thing is, all of a sudden, these stories change. Or Sheena's like, well, she uh, he was unhappy for so long. Once again, now, it's like more steam, more like steam in Sandoval's engine of like, you know what? Like pretty soon, it's going to be like, he had to fuck Rachel. I mean, how would you not fuck Rachel? He was miserable. It just had to be done. He had to slip the penis into the thing. It had to be done. So it's already just so weird. But it's like, I feel like Sheena, like this pumps her up in some way. It makes her feel good to say. And like, you know, Sandoval is letting these things be said. Like Sandoval is literally like, you know, edging this on too of like, yeah, dude, like I, when I think about it, like you're the worth, like the, your reaction to this was the worst than anybody. You're number one. Like you're my dancing with the stars. You know, you know what I'm saying, Sheena? And I just feel so sad because she needs to hear that and she wants to hear that. And it just, uh, it, it, it really does speak to what Ariana just said. Anyways, we get a montage of Jax and Brittany fighting. Right hell, right hell, Jax. And Sheena's like, I can't believe, I can't believe that when they got back together. And Katie's like, there are still stories about him running around town on Brittany. And Lala's like, oh my God, totally. So that's wild. So Katie is, and okay, you guys, in terms of Jax and Brittany, I've heard the stories about Jax running around town too. all that shit. Those have been out there for a while. I don't know. I've heard some, you know, but we're in a day and age where people can say anything that they want. I've also been told the, well, I'm not going to, I'll talk about that next week, but what they're currently, I, I'm not going to say that yet. Um, anyways, Sheena's like, I'm going through actual grieving, grieving process. Ariana has already grieved the loss of this, making millions of dollars, living her best fucking life. I'm not there. Sheena's like, I haven't made a million dollars. I'm in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. So I'm not there. I just think it's so presumptuous to say that she is fully grieved. Like guys, like dude, grief isn't linear. My God, this shit with my mom, like it hits me at the weirdest times. Like I, I will. So like I got, I felt worse last week than I did like four months prior. Like, you know what I'm saying? Grief is not linear. 
Like it is so weirdly presumptuous for anybody to say she has already grieved the loss. I have it. And I'm like, well, what, what have you been? <laughs> I, I just, I'm, it's making me a bird so I can fly far, far away. What have you been doing? Like grieve the, grieve the loss. There is no loss. He's right there still wanting to be friends with you. Grieve the loss. You didn't have to, who knew that you, you didn't have to spend this time grieving because he still is there. He's still right there wanting to be buddy, buddy with you. Right. And a spoiler alert, they're not even that great of friends right now after filming. Like, so look what all that did. Like all of it was like a bunch of BS. And that's why you got to watch the after show too, because Lala even talks about, you know, like, oh dude, Tom, he like bought my kid a gift. And it's like, that's his whole bit to try to like win people over. So Lala is even thrilled with Sandoval after the season. This is all time and place shit, but it is weird to see how filming really fucks with people's minds, you know? And Katie's like, okay, so Tom Sandoval, he's the type of individual that you want in your life because you miss this person that doesn't exist. Who he was before I do miss, she says. First year of Upfronts, when we were in New York, Sandoval was the only person who even welcomed me into the photos with this group. We see the photo from 2012. And Katie's like, literally, that's so long ago. Like, and, you know, Katie's like, I'm not hanging on to fucking 12 years ago, Sheena. Like, she just talks so much about this upfront, and I get it. He was this person that brought you into the group. That's a very powerful thing. He talked to you when Stassi and all these people didn't. But Katie's like, I'm not holding on to the past. And Lala's like, well, that's not fair, Katie, of you to say. And like, that's not fair. you got to listen to her. Like Lala is trying to be the Sheena whisperer. The for unfortunate thing is Lala sometimes is so unhinged herself that, it, you know, Anyways, Katie's like, I don't have any sympathy. I'm just waiting for this conversation to be over. In a talking head, Katie goes, I wish Sheena would just wake the fuck up and look at this situation for what it is. Sandoval never really gave a fuck about your friendship. Cut ties, move on, be a good friend to Ariana. And Lala's like, let's talk about something fun. And Sheena's like, I got one for you. I slept with the bartender. And we see a faceless bartender man. And they're like, nah, recently? And she's like, no, recently. No, it's like literally 2006. And Katie's like, well, I'm glad I left the house for this conversation. Jeez. Huh. And Lala's like, what's wrong? And Katie's like, I'm literally going to dump off this roof if I have to keep talking about Tom Sandoval. And Lala's like, we're not. We're talking about the bartender that Sheena fucked. And Katie goes, literally, with all due respect, Sheena, I wish you would get the fuck over it. Like literally, and her voice starts breaking. That man has never offered me a sincere apology since the day I met him. He has been awful to me. He's interfered with my marriage. He made everyone think that I was a monster. My own ex-husband, I think. And the fact that anyone is having trouble getting over this trash bag of a human, it's fathomless. Because like this person is there, they're a demon. Intense Vanderpump music. Ding, 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 ding. And listen, Katie's delivery. You know, it's always like this. We always pick apart women's deliveries, right? You know, but Katie's delivery, not the best, right? Like the, you know, you got the demon and like, it's easy to pick apart. Oh, Katie's miserable. Katie's a, Katie has reasons to be miserable when it's talked about her past. She seems like she's really happy in whatever life she has created for herself right now, which I wish we would actually see a little bit more of on this show, but she's right. Tom Sandoval has never said really anything of substance in a good way about Katie Maloney. And yes, did what obviously was not the reason, the main reason that her and Schwartz split up, but man, he really sure like helped grease the wheels on that process. And Schwartz we seen is that like kind of go along guy. Oh, I'm going to go along. Like he wants to have a good time. He wants to be people with like, yeah, let's just party. Uh, you know, I bought you running shoes, dude. Like, you know, it's so much easier to like Sandoval because he wants to be liked. Katie, you know, is somebody that's like, take me as I am, you know, like whatever. This is how I feel. This is how I see it. But she's right. She was right all along. And people started warming up to the fact of like, holy shit. It was like the end of the usual suspects. Like, oh my God, he's been Kaiser Soze this whole time. Like he, she was right. It turns out everything that Katie had been saying was right. We seem like we've forgotten that over the break. And we have to be reminded that like, holy shit. Yes. She is, like I said, not being some kiss ass to Ariana. She has her own ax to grind here. Like really did poison that relationship in certain ways. 
And like he did some really shitty things. And she saw how in love her husband was and how loyal her husband was to Tom way over her. And we see it to this day. Like I said, a couple episodes ago, if only if Schwartz had fought this hard for Katie, they would still be together. Because Schwartz is like fighting tooth and nail to get to get Sandoval back into the gang. Like, imagine if he had come up to everybody and did this when there were rough times with Katie, that he had always been there, no matter anything that Katie said or did. And if you compare the two in terms of what they did, Katie never did anything nearly as bad as Sandoval. So it's got to be really frustrating. So I'm trying to provide a little context about like what you're seeing in this is that people like, oh my God, Katie said she's going to jump off the roof. Yeah, man, she's fucking sick of it. And it's got to be wild to be one of the only two people that haven't been like poisoned into zombies. Like she's actually sitting through a conversation where like people are like all of a sudden going, he's a good guy. I saw that he's hurt. Like, wait, what? She really must just be like, whole, like I would love to talk to Katie about this. Like, did, they, did you have an out of body experience in this scene? watching and like christina kelly would even be fun to talk to because christina kelly must just be watching this like an actual tv show going holy shit this is this is hysterical i mean also remind like my remind everybody tom sandoval told one of the most amazing ladies out there miss uh terry maloney katie's mom to fuck off to shut the fuck up remember that last season remember that that was tom sandoval as well <laughs> like I just feel like there just needs to be like like a flow chart at any point in any scene because we have so much history to pull from now that people are just forgetting things right. So now we move on to uh, Lisa Vanderpump strutting down Melrose. I always wish like the Saturday Night Fever song was playing. Like you can tell by the way she mind that mind. She's a money man. She's mind as she walks in and they have the old pump gate now attached to Tom Tom. She's like, oh, a new gate. Oh, nigga Lane, we put a new gate on Tom Tom. And she comes in and there's like this, you know, they, they have the staff of Tom Tom. They're all like unbuttoned, like, except for like the t like last two buttons, like chesticles fully out here. And uh, Liz is like, hello, how do you like it here? And we meet Charlie, a former pump server. She's like, I don't want to lose you. I mean, it was bad enough losing pump. As difficult as it was to let pump go, we had some staff that we loved and adored for many years, including the chef. So we moved it all to Tom Tom. So I guess this guy is like, thank you, Lisa, for keeping me. Tom Tom, uh, Tom, Tom Sandoval comes in, sleeveless sweater. He's like, is this pump now, dude? What's going on? You want to go sit down and chat, dude? Yeah, let's do it, dude. Let's go to the garden. Yes, let's go to the garden, dear boy. We're bringing Kiku over, the chef from Pump. Yeah, we're going to make this much more dining-oriented. He's like, it feels a little weird that this happened with either without Schwartz or I knowing about it, dude. I don't think we would ever consult a 2.5% partner, she says in a talking head. I mean, I do, I do want to remind people, like Tom Tom, remember, they own... 5%, right? 5% together of Tom Tom. I mean, this is how shrewd of a businesswoman Lisa Vanderpump is. Totally use their names, Tom Tom, but they don't really have any say in it. He's just able to walk in whenever and he probably gets, you know, a discount on drinks. Anyways, uh, they sit down. Uh, you know, Tom's like, I want a Diet Coke, dude. I'm not drinking, dude. And uh, Lisa's like, that's adventurous. Maybe you should drink booze. Like, I almost felt like that. And then Tom was like, hey, dude, do you want some ice cream? And she's like, no. Yeah, dude, I've got honey lavender and like cookie dough, dude. Um, Like, you know, ice cream makes everything better, dude. He's like, everybody was really kind to me right off the bat. The first day was when I saw you and you came to Wolf, right? Which I know nobody could understand how we're going to open it in a few months because it looks like, you know, such a shit show right now uh, when it's the, the sexiest place in Tahoe. You literally get your D sucked there. So sexy. Uh, I loved how you slammed uh, the, the, the hammer against the wall and yelled out everybody but your name in terms of who's responsible for any of this. I loved it. A gigantic girl boner. And then Lisa's like, I would like some ice cream. And he's like, yes, dude, yes. Like Tom's like, uh, I'm, I'm getting them one at a time, dude. Lisa just accepted the ice cream. <laughs> My plan is all coming to fruition, dude. So 
She's like, um, uh, it matches the tablecloth, this ice cream. So he's like, you look a lot happier than the last time I saw you. We flash back to two weeks earlier where he's like, this is a lot for me, Letha. Yeah, I created it, dude, but it's still a lot. I don't want to see any one of you ever, whatever you've done, being that depressed. I appreciate it, dude. Yeah. He has his lightning bolt earring, his Fruit Loop candy necklace. And he goes, I'm worried about Rachel, dude. Also, I miss her. Have you spoken to her lately? No, dude. I want to like just have some sort of relationship with her, whether it's a friendship or, you know. Okay, I wasn't going to tell you, but I spoke to her at length. Yeah, you know, uh, not on a podcast. And he's like, you did? Oh, he sighs a huge sigh. I don't know. Some of the things she said, she just doesn't seem very happy with you. And he looks over. And I'm talking to he's like, the last time I talked to Rachel, she had stated that when people get done with these programs, they'll like stay there. And I told her, I was like, that's something you're going to have to face eventually. And the longer you stay there, it's like the harder it's going to be, dude. And she got mad at me, dude, of course, because it became the thing where I didn't 100% agree with everything that said to her. I was like, you know, bad for her or something. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, I don't know, dude. I was like, Baffers. <laughs> if I didn't, if I didn't agree, if. <laughs> If I didn't agree 100% with these licensed medical professionals, I was like, man. <laughs> he gives a look like he should have just in a jack off motion, like, duh. <laughs> I told her, dude, I was literally doing zero therapy. I told her, dude, she's got to face this around. I told her she needed to start a band, dude. You really want to get over it? You hit the road, Jack. Like, no, literally, you hit the road with your band, dude. Dude, why don't you tour with me, dude? We'll do some we'll do some duet, dude, like Island in the Stream, like Kenny and Dolly, dude. We'll do, like, Summer Lovin' and stuff from Greece. Like, that's some real therapy. You want to get in touch with yourself. You hit the road, dude. You're going to stay in therapy? Oh, yeah, fuck no, dude. You're crazy, dude. No. <laughs> he said I might be back. Tom, why would you? Why would you? <laughs> the weights. He's crazy, dude. That's that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. You might be bad for Tom. I don't even think she has one thing to even back that claim up at all. What are you talking about, man? Hey, man. We all see that's ridiculous. You're in the clear. She's crazy. <laughs> Lisa's, Lisa's like, she's she said, she, I've talked to her in length and she really said some things. She really didn't like when you screen recorded her fiddling with us. Like, I didn't agree with everything they were doing a hundred percent. I was a bad <laughs> Eat some more fucking ice cream, Lisa. Jesus. I didn't want to hear I spoke to her at length. <laughs> it's, it's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. I just want to love her, dude. I just want to screen record her without her permission, dude. Come on. My heart's in the right place. Why can't... Sheena says I'm okay. What the fuck? Maybe I could get Sheena to talk to Rachel. I talked to her at length, Tom. Do you think she wants some ice cream, Letha? If I drove to the desert with two pints of cherry vanilla <laughs> with wavy gravy. Tom, at this point, just fucking do a talking act. We're like, dude, I was bad for it. Like, 
just straight out of the gate, dude. Really bad stuff. Like legitimately bad. Like, like I think back now, really bad stuff. Like I was asking her to do some really weird things and I became a completely different person or I was potentially this person the whole time. And I just had pulled the wool over everybody's eyes. Anyway, this ice cream is fattening. I've got to stop eating it. I'll save it for Billy Lee. Anyways, I, I, I needed that laugh. She said to me, Tom, he wasn't that comfortable lying to everybody. She said, he said that life is lying. I did not say that. Well, that's what she told me. I've been worried fucking thick about her. Like, I just want to give her a fucking hug and like, you know, and make sure she's okay. And then hug her so tight that the breath just squeezes out her. <laughs> Just want to give her a fucking tight hug, dude. And then just take... Just say, she told me you... She told me you told her lying is a way of life. I did not say that. Are you lying right now? Yes. So what? Like, Listen, I have my problem with Rachel, but I 100,000% believe that Tom was like, dude, look, dude, you know I'm older than you, right, dude? Well, get this, what I've learned, that lying is a way of life, dude. And guess what? I do it the best. Puts on sunglasses. Rock and roll. I just want to hug her, dude, and squeeze all the life out of her, dude. Uh, I just want to like, I just want to like know that she's okay. He's like, listen, if she's willing to talk to me on the phone, maybe she's willing to talk to you. She blocked me, dude. She's blocked you. Yes. Well, then it's over. And he puts his he puts his head into his hands, and we see that he has blue nail painting on. You know, because even through this tragedy, you got to keep up your nails, dude. Don't hey, that's like that's that's next to godly and godliness, dude. Keep the nails up, just because you're crumbling on the inside and don't know who you are and created this entire thing. Got to make sure the nails aren't chipped. Um, that's hysterical. And also the Lisa, like she blocked me, dude. And then Lisa's like, she blocked you. Well. I guess it is over. Like yeah, Tom blocked Summer Moon. Is it over with them? Like no. Like I love that Lisa was like, "Well, I, I guess that's legal then." I, it is. I can't. My hands are tied. I had no idea about the blocking. Also, it is funny that we started off the season with Lala with like texting outside of the Tom Tom in the Tom Tom Alley, texting Rachel. We've completely dropped that. Right. We didn't even get a Lala going. She read it, never checked. Like, we didn't get any follow-up on that. And I think that's probably when they were like, oh, shit. Rachel's talking a lot of shit on her pod. There's probably a lawsuit coming. Let's um edit anything out except for, like, Sandoval bringing up Rachel. Because I, I, I did wonder, like, we just never got anything back about that. It was just like, we threw it out at the end of the episode, episode one, nothing back. So anyways, just tragedy. Sandoval's like, oh, shit. Lisa's like, it's over real sad stuff at Tom Tom like this just can't and he's got that much dairy in his belly now from the ice cream so just all in all this guy can't be feeling that good but Lisa continues in a talking head like uh she said that she feels manipulated by him and she also told me she didn't love him anymore like I mean like this is a wild conversation and I think on Rachel's podcast she says what the actual conversation was and I think it was based around Graham aka Hippie and, uh, you know, but I love that Rachel's like, I don't love him anymore. Or now she's got a more solid voice. Like, I don't love him any. I don't love him anymore, Lisa, because she goes slow with her words. Um, so I love that, like, Lisa presents it of like, I was a shoulder to cry on. She opened up to me and told me she felt manipulated by him potentially because he's screen or go to her. You know, like I love that Lisa's like, she told me everything. Very sad stuff. And now she goes like, she's like, you've got to go forward now, Tom. I think it's the past. I really do. Lisa knowing that Rachel had wants nothing to do with any of them. So giving Sandoval like some, some, some tough medicine. Okay. We go to a next scene. Lisa pulls up to Lala's office. We have this song in the background going dreams coming true. Dreams coming true. Uh, Dreams coming true. Dreams coming true. Too much Lisa in this episode. She enters the office. She's like, this is your office, Lala. And she's like, yeah, I have this space. I have the conference room up front. I have the one next door. That's grown up, Lala. 
And Lala's like, we're in the process. I don't like to use the word dissolve. I like to use the word rebrand because that's what we're doing. I will be give them Lala, just me as myself. And then you're giving up the name. Yeah, I've got to get rid of Lala in the name. The brand needs to stand on its own. Uh, and I'm talking to her, like, when I created Give Them Lala, it was, I was shoving myself down people's throat. I have changed as a person. I'm, believe it or not, a little bit more reserved. And I need my brand to reflect that. <laughs> She's like, I'm just a bitch in these streets trying to rebrand and get a sperm donor. And smiling. Why do you want a sperm donor? Because I want another baby so badly. And this morning, my child is like fully speaking. So I got to get a new kid. Did he tell you that you need a sperm donor? I love if Ocean was like, mommy, sperm donor. No, Randy. No, Randall. No, daddy. And uh, Lisa's like, why don't you just wait till you meet someone else? Because I don't want a baby daddy. Listen, it's not happening. There's no changing my mind. See, that's it. And people say, oh, you can't compare a baby to what Ariana. Yeah, okay, fine. But this is what I'm talking about. When Lala makes up her mind, you can't change your mind whether it be a baby or anything. And Lisa's like, just moves on. Okay, okay. I would have, Lisa was like, oh, can Ken be a sperm donor? He's excellent. Oh, that was needed to be a sperm donor. Do I put it in the cup? Where do I deposit it? I can't believe that. Anyways, Lala's like, listen, I know this is not the norm. I know that. And I just found like go going the donor route is the right decision for me. And then Lola's like, I want many. I, you know, I'm going to have this baby. Then I like to adopt a baby. If I meet a guy later on, we can have a baby. I'll just have all the kids in the world and I'm going to be so happy. Um, she says, I want an absolute. And her voice starts breaking with this baby. And the producer's like, what do you mean by absolute? And this is like, listen, she says, no matter what, this is my baby. No one can ever come and take it from me. And this is how much the Randall situation scarred her because she does have to share certain aspects of ocean with her. And she says, I love being a mom. And I do respect Lala for this. I like, that's what I'm saying. Nobody's like a hundred percent batshit crazy. People are great. Like Lala is a great mom, obviously. Also, if you do have kids that you don't want, give them to Lala, give them to Lala. She wants all the babies. So please like just deposit babies at Lala's office because she wants all of them. But like, this is the one, uh, you know, and this is what I like about reality shows in general, there's always one thing that you'll like about a person. And I do like this element of Lala. And I do respect that fact about the Randall situation. Cause like, that's gotta be horrifying. Like I was doing the, the Jeff Lewis show today and like still seeing the hoops that he has to go through with his ex gauge in regards to their child. It just seems horrifying. It seems horrifying to have to do that. It just seems like so much, not just on the parents, but the kid itself, it's gotta be emotionally depleting for everybody. But anyways, Lisa, of course, like, well, I'm not here just to talk about that. Uh, Sandoval. Oh, I've got to bring up Sandoval in every scene. And she was like, yeah, it was a lot in Tahoe. She goes, I don't have to be torn between Sandoval and Ariana, which Sheena does. No, she doesn't have to. She does it to herself. Lala goes, I talked to Ariana because there was a group photo taken of all of us in Tahoe and the internet was dragging Sheena for being next to Sandoval. And I said, why couldn't you just like put out a message? And she was like, I don't want it to be a headline. And I'm like, everything's a headline. So then she did it and texted me. She did. And we do see that she did. And this was the message she uh, wrote. At Sheena is an amazing friend who took a photo with a fan for their birthday. There's been so many mean comments towards her for it. And she was just doing something nice. We always try to stop for photos. And when the whole cast is present, it's common for the whole cast to be in the photo, regardless of what is going on in between any of us at the time. I am doing this statement of my own free will. And in no way does Lala have a gun and is threatening to, do you want to get popped? Let's get popped. Um, so that's the statement she wrote based on Lala. So Lala feels on her high horse. Like she did it. Cause I told her, e um, I don't know, man. Like they've been dealing with the internet for so long, way longer than I have. And yes, the fucking internet is a mean ass place. Listen, I was even like, you know, hearing Chelsea from love is blind talking about it. It is. I mean, it is negative Nancy out there. Truly. It's, it's wild when you get to see it on a daily basis, when you do something, and this is such a low level thing, what I do, but you, I, I see more things now in the last four years, like shit that is like turned my beard white. I mean, you just like you, it's like a stream of negativity. So it's really, it, it is a wild wave to ride. So I can't imagine, but at this point you're doing it to yourself, like put down your phone, Sheena, 
Everybody needs to put down their phones and go out there and live their life because Lala is strong-ish, way stronger than Sheena. But, uh, it, you know, I mean, Lala is probably having a bad week right now, but Lala will talk, you know, talk in circles until she's confused people into being like, ah, oh, maybe she was right. She's like, I told Ariana, like, they need to have a conversation. Something's got to give. I only see a shitstorm com coming, Lala, my confidant, my business lady. And Lala's like, yeah, yeah, I agree. So we get to the song, we won't back down, chase it down. I want to see the light. We're at uh, uh, Sir DJ James Kennedy's fist pumping. Ali Dally is watching her boyfriend slay the crowd. And we see two uh, people in trucker hats, pink and yellow. And it's Schwartz and Joe. Schwartz and Joe looking like they are straight out of an episode of Cops. Where, you know, like they're like, you know, couples outside 7 Eleven fighting. They're like, that dude, he told me he'd give me some Marlboro lots or something. It's like, that's the kind of energy they're bringing. So they're like laughing on Melrose. And Schwartz is like, have you ever heard of the term barking spiders? It's like a euphemism when people fart. And Joe, Joe's like, <laughs> uh, Joe has like big. Uh, big Jim Carrey energy without like the, the money and the awards and stuff like that. Or like, you know, but like, you're just like, rah, 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 rah. <laughs> so this is not how Joe sounds, but this is just how I'm going to be doing Joe. The part of Joe will be played by Ryan Bailey. He graduated from Arizona state university with a theater degree. You're in good hands. So Joe's already coming in hot. He's like, rah, barking spiders. <laughs> Big Bella Baxter from Poor Things energy as well. That's Emma Stone. She just won the Oscar for it. Have you seen Poor Things? You know exactly what I'm talking about. Just she's making a lot of faces, fiddling, trying to find out how to be a person. Anyways, Schwartz is like, what's up, Allie? What's going on? Oh, good to see you. Hey, this is my friend Joe. And she's like, hey, hey, nice to meet you. Hey, 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 what's going on? Hey, look at us. We, we're like uh, hunched over in our chairs. <laughs> look at us. <laughs> we're smelling our armpits. <laughs> I'm Joe. And Allie takes him in and Allie goes, huh, you guys are funny. Uh, and it doesn't seem like a compliment. Like, oh, you guys are funny. You guys are a lot. You guys are funny. Anyways, they're just like, Joe's still like, oh, Jesus, the chair. <laughs> um, and then uh, Schwartz is like, Ali, have you met Joseph? Like now it's not even Joe, it's Joseph. You've met Joseph the carpenter, Jesus's dad, right? And uh, Ali's like, no, I, I don't think so. Ali's like, I would, I would remember. And she's like, oh, she's like a badass hairstylist. She's from Wisconsin. And, uh, <laughs> and she's like, Joe's like, that's about it. <laughs> and then she like puts a fake mic in Schwartz's face. She's like, <laughs> and uh, Allie goes, I don't know much about Joe, but I do know that the other girls have a lot of problems with her, especially Katie. And we flash back to four months earlier. Joe is a creep. And Schwartz's like, don't disparage her. He's like, I mean, didn't Joe move in with Schwartz right after they got divorced? And then uh, DJ James Kennedy's like, baby, he walks up. He's like, oh, this is Joe, right? How are you, darling? Good. This is my good, dear friend, Joe. And Ali's like, I get friends. I get I get friend vibes. I get like BFF vibes, you know? And then DJ James Kennedy's like, oh, yeah, friends with benefits, right? Right? You stick, you getting the sausage in there, Schwartz? All right. <laughs> yeah. And Joe's like, nah, no, come on. And she's hiding under her hat, her trucker hat. And Ali's like, do you miss Tahoe? Are you happy to be back? And Schwartz is like, Tahoe's a great success. Many breakthroughs. And Joe's like, D did you and Shandoval get along? <laughs> and uh, he's like, I'll be honest and say part of me was like, dude, like stoked to see him, I guess. And Joe goes, oh, and holds her hand to her heart like, oh, oh, it's amazing. Oh, oh. And he's like, yeah, it was like, um, I was so 
so stoked, you know, it was, he was like, I was stoked to see, you know, us three, the band back together, talking about Schwartz, Sandfall, and DJ James Kennedy, like the, 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 how they view themselves in the show is wild. Like, have you guys ever watched the show and said, oh, these it's it's like fucking it's like the Beatles without Ringo, you know, like DJ James Kennedy, Sandoval and, and Schwartz. Like, I've never thought that in my life. But DJ James Kennedy was like, the band is back together. And she always just has her hand over her heart. Going, rrr, 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 rrr. She has looked like Beaker from the Muppets a little bit, too, a little bit like. Rrr, rrr. And Schwartz is like, yes. DJ James Kennedy's like, Sandoval and I are in a better place than we were, but now what Sandoval does and says going forward will dictate how our friendship goes, he says in a talking head. And Schwartz is like, how's Hippie been? Is he reacclimated? And I was like, well, we put him in the living room in a crate, you know, that way the cat can come up because he has behavioral issues, he bites. Before I had seen some moments where he would be like a little aggressive, when he came back to you, I swear to God, he seemed like a changed dog. And then Allie's like, uh, is that Tom Sandoval? You know, Tom Sandoval was like creeping in the corner in his sleeveless sweater. Like, hey, what's up, dude? Oh, uh, bad news. Uh, Rachel blocked me, dude. Lisa said it's over. He didn't say that. But like, that's I, lo I love that. Like, also, Schwartz was like in the middle of kissing their ass of like, ever since Hippie came to you, he's a changed dog. Like, I've never seen it. It's like magic. You guys are amazing. And uh, so anyways, Joe's like, yeah, it is Sandoval. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then Schwartz is like, hey, I was I was thinking, um, he was like, oh, DJ James Kennedy, I was thinking, um, I was going down a YouTube rabbit hole the other night. Um, do you think the moon is actually the moon or like a base that the Illuminati work? No, he's <laughs> but you know, like Schwartz has some wild YouTube searches, like a little Craig Conover territory. But he's like, No, I went through like a YouTube like rabbit hole and I was watching these old Frank Sinatra videos, dude, you know, and shit. And Ali's like, I love that, like Rat Pack videos. And I was like, how cool, like, guys night, Rat Pack style. We'll dress up to the nines. He's like, I'm in it, dude. I'm in it. Like a nice steakhouse. Okay. And he's like, guys night. Guys night again. We've got a guys night. So you know DJ James Kennedy. All he has to hear is guys night. This guy loves a guys night. Guys night. Round two. So DJ James Kennedy is in. And this is the silly thing that reality shows do of, like, trying to plan events. Like, you know, you know, like where you can dress up and it looks good on camera for a scene. And we see Sandoval with his sleeveless sweater coming. He's like, hey, what's up, guys? What's up, dudes? Hey. Oh, funny to bump into you guys here. Oh, I, I saw cameras, but I had no clue it was this. You know, I was down the street. I just figured I uh, stopped by, dude. Hey, Joe, what's up, dude? Scoot over a little bit. Let's all get in here. Yeah. Um. So Sandoval sits down. So it's like, how was Tom Tom? He's like, good, dude. I talked to Letha for a little while, dude. Just kind of filled her in on stuff. And um, she filled me in on some stuff. And yeah, I, I got us some ice cream. Oh, cool. Wait, James, let me see these on you. And he takes out these like girl glasses. And he's like, CJ James Kennedy puts them on. And Joe's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Joe also comes, uh, sounds a little bit like the Kool-Aid man. Like, oh, right. <laughs> and Joe's like, are those yours, Tom? <laughs> and Senator's like, yeah, dude. And Joe's like, honestly, those are like the coolest glasses on you, TJ James Kennedy. <laughs> and Allie goes, oh, my gosh, it's giving like, um, what's his name? Elton John vibes. He's like, Elton John. And then Santa Ball goes. You can have them, dude. Yeah. Those glasses that I just took off my face. You can have them. Yeah. Yeah. Do you see these underwears I'm wearing? They're yours. Say the word, dude. You like skims? Well, they skimming going to be yours, dude. No. Uh, and by the way, Allie has this great line that is like just under her breath. She goes, James, he got Rachel sunglasses last year too. Remember were they like Versace sunglasses or something? He gave them like from her, from him and Ariana at Rachel's birthday, the camping, the, the, that camping trip thing. But Allie points out like, James, he got Rachel sunglasses last year too. Super great line by Allie. Allie, like it is wild. Allie, Allie Dally, she is kind of amazing. I really want to see how their relationship works away from the cameras. Ali says, it definitely feels like she's trying, he's trying to buy James. I just hope that James doesn't actually fall for his sad attempt at an apology. 
I just think he'll end up disappointed. Like, why did I waste all my time on this loser? Boom. And then she smiles. She smiles at the end. Like, this is how you do it. You don't say some shit like Sheena of like, she used to be my back to dancer. Just smile. That says it all. Just say something clear. Say it with your chest. You're right. You're completely right. And like, man, like Ali seems like a good one. And then DJ James Kennedy's like, you know, through the years, like Tom has always given me like a cool, like older brother gift. I have not lost one thing he's ever given me. And he's like, Tom. And Joe's like, I, I like it a lot. <laughs> and Allie kind of looks like, oh, God. But this is like DJ James Kennedy really does look up to him. Like you just see it more and more as like this older brother that really cares for him. When in essence, it doesn't seem like Sandoval really, truly cares about DJ James Kennedy. Now we're at uh, another scene. We're at like the Goodyear beer station. I think it's over on, uh, what is that? La, La Brea and Wilshire. And it's another scene with Tom Schwartz and Joe. And they walk in, it's daylight. You can tell they're scaring everybody around them because of the energy they bring in. And, uh, you know, Schwartz is like, let's get some tokens and some tacos. And it was like, hey, tacos. <laughs> yeah. Hey, this is such a cool place. <laughs> um, so they order a shot and a beer. A shot, Schwartz says. And... Shorts is like, just to be clear, Joe and I were never in a formal relationship. However, last summer, you know, maybe I didn't fully divulge just how much me and Joe cared about each other. And Joe is like, don't look about me in the shot while we take it. And uh, they do the shot in the beer. You know, he's like, they're drinking buddies. They're drinking buddies. And poor Joe, you know, it just seems like she truly does probably love Schwartz and is just there for anything Schwartz wants her there for. And it's sad because Schwartz does not like her the way that obviously Joe, like Schwartz obviously cares about her and wants to be buddies with her, but also it's not, it's not the same feelings. Like you can tell that immediately. And it's sad. Like that happens a lot, unfortunately, <laughs> Jesus. So uh, he's explaining to the audience in talking heads, a little bit more about the relationship. He's like, part of it was Katie had a lot of resentment towards her. Joe's not everyone's cup of tea, but I think, um, She's great um, cup of tea. That is very striking. Like it's almost like what Kyle said about Teddy at BravoCon of like, well, Teddy is very much happening for me. Cause somebody said like, stop trying to make Freddie happen. Well, Freddie is very much happening for me. And that's what like Schwartz is like, uh, most everybody thinks she's a goof, but uh, she's my cup of tea anyways. So we get into their batshit conversations and Schwartz is like, Oh, by the way, I was listening to NPR dude. Um, there's this guy he testified under oath that they found alien technology. Uh, look me in the eye and tell me you're not a tall gray. And she's like, <laughs> I'm not a tall gray. <laughs> and she makes weird eye motions like Zoics, pull my finger, you know, um, tall grays are aliens. That's like a type of alien that they believe exists out there. You know, these people were like, did you hear Joe Rogan today? No offense to Joe Rogan. He's, you know, he's fun, but like, these are the people that like, that go down like, Oh, Alex Jones, man. He had a good episode today. Like, tell me you're not a tall gray. Also, she's wearing this le black leather baseball hat. And I don't know. I'm just looking at a freeze frame of Joe right now with her eyes crossed. Like she's doing this for sure. I just feel bad for Joe. Cause now people like me are like, <laughs> anyways, she's like, I mean, it depends on the day if I'm an alien or not. Anyways, last night was so funny, sir. He's like, you lost your goat cheese ball virginity. I did. It was a beautiful night. By the way, everyone in my life, they're like, is that your, is that your girl? No. And you're like, you're like, it's your sister. <laughs> you see, it's like your sister. You know? And George is like, yeah. But like, we actually had sex. And then Joe, Joe goes, no, <laughs> don't say it. <laughs> like very like intense energy. Producer goes, when was the last time that you and Jojo were intimate to Schwartz? And he's like, oh God, um, I don't remember the last time we hooked out. And then jo Joe is, gets her first talking head. And some people just pop on camera and Joe, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Anyways. The, you know, the cameraman asked the same question. He's like, oh, when, when was the last time me and George were intimate? <laughs> I don't know. I, I think like a month ago. 
And I was like, oh, it's so sad. Like he was still boning her like a month before this talking head. I just, oh God. Like it wasn't just a one-time mistake. It's repeat. Like he, like they kept boning. Um, and she says, as a matter of fact, like, I think a month ago, <laughs> like she doesn't have a care in the world. She's like, I think we really did catch feelings for each other. I'm pretty sure they're still there. <laughs> He's like, now it's more platonic. Like we've reestablished boundaries and like we kick it and um, we're friends. So, you know, you, it's a tale of two cities right there. Right. Like she's like, the feelings are, are still there. I pretty much think. And he's like, no, completely platonic. We've reestablished boundaries. That's what I'm talking about. That conversation that must've went down that he probably danced around it. And she did not pick up on any of it. Like he was like, Oh, maybe in like a year or two. Anyways, they're, she's very happy to get the taco. She's like, <laughs> and Schwartz is like, I hope she's not mad at me for this in the talking head. Anyways, they're eating the tacos and then they start doing like robot. They're like, rah, 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 rah. and you see, it's like, <laughs> so it's just like two, it's like two slower adults that really can't speak. So they just like make sound like, and by the way, I do this a lot too. I'll just be like, rah, 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 rah. but they just do like, I'm doing the robot. Robot. Doing the robot. And I know you guys might be annoyed at me, but that's kind of how she comes off. So anyways, Schwartz gets back on his uh, NPR stuff. He's like, in a different timeline, dude, we could be living happily ever after. And he's like, you said you needed like two to three years. So 43, he's like, I could maybe compromise on 47. We don't know what's going to happen with artificial intelligence. I got to leave a door open for non-human bi biogenics. And Joe's like, yeah, let's get those aliens in there. <laughs> so you also see what he played up with her of like, you said you need two to three more years. Like, I'll wait for you. <laughs> It's just weird. I feel sad. Um, ah, it just makes me sad, but it's so goofy to watch. It's like you got Billy Lee for Tom Sandoval and you got Joe for Schwartz. It, it It's like, you know, you know what it is too? No, what it is? No, I'll say what it is. It's like Chunk and Sloth from the Goonies. It's Chunk and Sloth from the Goonies. It's Schwartz is like, you're going to live with me now. And, you know, Sloth is like, baby Ruth. Baby Ruth. Like, that's like Joe. It's like, Baby Ruth. You know, and it's like Sloth, you care for Sloth. And like, he's a cool dude, like big guy, but you know, fun to be around. But now, like, you didn't you ever always thought, I, I was like, oh, Chunk and Sloth from the Goonies. Like, what hat? Like, does Chunk, did Chunk really have to take care of Sloth for the rest of Sloth's life? And does Sloth have any medical issues where like, did he have a short life? Is he still living with Chunk? Did you ever wonder, like I wrote this, um, God, this is like 15, 16 years ago. Me and my buddy, Pat, we wrote this um, sitcom called Chunk and Sloth, the college years. And that was the premise of it was that they did live together and they went to college together. And it was like a multi can anyways, completely different time in my life. But that was like the whole concept was like, well, you know, at the end of the Goonies, he's like, you're going to live with me now. Like, think about the reality of that situation. Like, like, did he have to literally like live with sloth? Like, did he bring the sloth home to the family? Like, what, where was that sequel? Right. Anyway. So that was, that scene was a lot. You guys, I feel like that should have been the last scene. Cause it was just a lot, a lot of noise, a lot of information felt very bad for Joe. I hope she's having an okay week. Hope she's not reading or listening to anything. Okay, so now we're into the last couple of scenes of the show. Thank God. Uh, but Ali Dally is preparing for all the women to come over to read their their birth charts. And she says, I need to uh, look at a TikTok video to make charcuterie. This is the only ding on Ali so far. The charcuterie board that she is putting together. And by the way, she is so young, but it looks like when I like what my first thought of a charcuterie board was in my early 20s. It's like just pepperoni. And like little, like, you know, the little things of cheese you find at the grocery store, like the little square cheese things. And you put it in like three separate lines and then you just throw the pepperoni willy nilly all over that. And you're like charcuterie, you know, and here's some Ritz crackers. Like that's everybody's first like attempt at charcuterie before you know the name charcuterie. 
So we intercut the scenes between Guy's Night and Allie Dally's uh, birth chart party. And Allie's pouring wine and Schwartz and DJ James Kennedy are the first one. It's like this H&H steakhouse, but it looks like Fogo to Chow. And DJ James Kennedy's like, you know what town I'm going to? And Schwartz is like, what? Chow town. I'm going to go chow town. I'm going to eat a lot. Also, the music is very weird in this scene. It's like Empire of the Sun. It's like raining down on me, raining down on me. Very odd music choice. Anyways, Mr. Banks, Allie's cat looks like he, you know, Mr. Banks looks like he's been through better days. You can tell Mr. Banks has had a real disruption in the way, the way of living, you know, like just looks very just scared, like on edge, you know, dealing with hippie, you know, now the cast of Vanderpump rules is coming. Mr. Banks is like, I legitimately didn't sign up for this. Like Allie is the sweetest owner ever. And ever since she met DJ James Kennedy, my life has turned upside down. I would like a Mr. Banks spinoff if I'm telling the truth. Anyways, Kate is the first to get there. And then uh, Ariane is there, brought some wine. Girls night. And everybody's excited to do the birth charts. Allie's got the paperwork out. I would love to get my birth chart read from Allie. Allie would be like, you're a demon. Anyway, Sheena comes in with these two big boxes. And so I guess uh, Sheena brings in these boxes. They must have been like really expensive invites to Taylor Swift because they're going to Taylor Swift together next week. And Allie says, when teardrops on my on my guitar blessed our ears on the radio, Taylor's song, I decided I wanted to be just like Taylor Swift. And we have flashback to 2012 with little Allie singing this beautiful song. Very cute. This girl's got nothing on me. She's like, but there can only ever be one Taylor. So I decided to become an astrologer instead. feels like there's some like middle ground of what you could be besides an astrologer. But like, I love that she's doing it. Anyways. Ariana sings the cheese song. She's like, cheese, 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 cheese. And then Lala comes in and, uh, you know, Allie offers her sparkling water. And she's like, I got you Pellegrino, but James said you hate that. And she's like, no, no, I love it. I love it. I love it. We're now over to H&H Steakhouse. And uh, they're talking about the Pellegrino water. I don't know, you guys. Tom uh, Sandoval walks in, like white tux jacket, the black glasses, the, the whole deal. Like he really does his Tom Sandoval costume thing. And she was like, are you still serving? Um, are you still serving the fresh coconuts? And then DJ James Kennedy's like, you do like the fresh juicy coconuts, don't you? Which is like, oh, big titties. Schwartz likes big old melons, big old Titties with melon nipples. All right. <laughs> and Schwartz is like, oh, I feel like Joe should pop up at something like, <laughs> but anyway, Schwartz is just laughing. Schwartz always just looks like he's come off like a tough night of drinking, you know, like this poor Schwartz too. It's just been through like, he's doing a lot of heavy lifting for Sandoval this season. And you can tell he's potentially at his breaking point. Uh, anyways, now Brock walks in, you know, he's like, listen, I did my best. I tried to get on the slick train. No, that's not my, he's like, I did my best. I tried to get on the slick train. Uh, I know that doesn't sound like Brock. I do have to remind people though. Somebody said my Sutton doesn't sound anything like, like, or it's foghorn leghorn. And I was like, yes. Like I, I for, always forget there's new listeners coming in all the time. Um, and, uh, I don't, uh, you know, I've been doing the Foghorn Leghorn for like, I realize that's not Sutton's voice. It's just how I, my interpretation of Sutton, I got two messages like, you know, that doesn't sound anything like her. I was like, yeah, no, I'm absolutely aware. Just like Brock is not a little Irish man, even though it'd be great if he was. Anyway, Schwartz is like, your shirt is fire, dude. It's, you look great, Brock. And so the waitress is like, we're going to bring around a selection of your meats. DJ James is like, yay, bring a selection of your meat, guys' nights. So uh, they're going to do like a meeting in competition. They joke around. He's like, by the way, Ali's at my house right now with Ariana, Katie, Lala, and Sheena. They're having like a girls' night astrology reading. And we cut over to the astrology reading. And Lala goes, can I tell you, I've been so excited for this. And Ali's like, we could either do the quick one-on-ones or I tell you guys. And Lala's like, I would love to hear about everybody. 
Okay, so Ariana is an Aquarius rising, Allie says, but then she has Jupiter in her first house. Jupiter is the planet of luck, wealth, opportunities. It's like having a four leaf clover in your pocket. And everybody's like, okay, that's so cool. But you see Sheena of like, how dare, why isn't my, why isn't it my birth chart? Why, why? You can just, you can just tell people are already jealous of Ariana's birth fucking chart. It's wild. You like, honestly, Ariana goes, listen, it definitely didn't feel lucky when Charlotte died. You know, it, it didn't feel lucky when my grandma died. And we flash back to all of these scenes last season and my relationship died. And we see flashbacks to that. Maybe somehow Tom was stomping on the energy of the four leaf clover. And then once his dumb foot was gone, it's just like, boom, blossomed, you know? And Lala's like, what about Sheena's cart? And she's like, Allie's like, I was super shocked. You know, your moon was in seventh house, which is about partnership. But then your son is in the 12th. So the first house is the beginning. The 12th house is the ending. And, you know, we're all going to die. But it does. <laughs> she's like, but <laughs> you're actually shining here because that's your son. You need to also like fill your cup before you fill others. That only allows you to shine brighter. And she's like, I'll never do that. And the talking is like story of my life, putting everything else first. That's just the way I was raised. But I de- do need to put myself first. But that's exact. by the way. Yes. Fill your cup up before anybody. Like, yes, Sheena, start just doing you start doing you. And I know that's so tough, but start doing you. And I think, I mean, listen, Allie, Allie, the voice of reason on this show all of a sudden. Anyways, she's like, yeah, on the airplane, you're supposed to put your mask on first. So, you know. <laughs> and then Allie's like, Lala, yours is interesting. You have fucking Pluto in the first house. The moment I saw it, I literally gasped. I was like, that's all you need to know about Lala. And Lala's like, why she's such a bitch? And they all laugh. Katie's an Aries moon. This is definitely not your first lifetime. And Katie's like, no, I'm on my last. And they all laugh. <laughs> In my previous life, I was always like a male, Katie says. That's why I'm having a hard time stepping into my feminine shit. Because like, because I've never been a woman before. And they all laugh. And Katie's like, if you ever wonder why I have such big dick energy, it's because I used to have a big dick. And she laughs. <laughs> and Ariana's like, yes, daddy. Um, there is something to be said for that too. I do. I am so curious about Katie's journey from this point on. And also to have your heart broken, essentially, or to see the fallacies of man, because we really are, I mean, we just really have so many faults, you know, and that women believe in us all the time when we don't believe in ourselves a lot of the time, but we then just care, like we're just destructive machines. And it's sometimes, you know, obviously we see these examples of how we hurt these women, especially in Vanderpump rules. So I'll be very curious what Katie is going to do with her life from this point on. So now we're back at Allie's. She tells Ariana, after logically things are looking up. I know it's shitty right now, but by 2024 March, which we're in it right now, you're going to be like, thank God that fucking happened. My place is way better now. And Sheena's like, I feel like you process this whole separation and just like still, you know, being in the same house, but like, and Ariana's like, I'm dealing with it in a legal back and forth with my lawyer. The internet thinks I've made millions of dollars. That is not true. And it's like on March 1st, was I financially prepared to move last year? No. And while I was like, not many people are. And she's like, the week before all this happened, I remember emailing my agent and my manager and it was like, guys, let's start like really trying to do some shit. Because I am not in a good place financially. And I'm talking to she's like, when I first started making like decent money, we decided we wanted to buy a house. Then I was playing catch up all the way up until Katie and I found a great location for the sandwich shop. Then a bunch of my money went towards that. And now I was at a point where in March, I was literally on my last $2,000. I'm not kidding, she says. He created this situation and now I'm fucking scrambling, Ariana says, trying to get my fucking shit together to be able to, in a financially responsible way, move on to the next step. And then we go back to uh, the the guys. I do want to say one more thing about that, too, is that that all checks out, too. Like, yeah. Also, I do find it interesting. You know, we'll talk more about this as the valley comes on, is that Brittany has now moved to a second location instead of Jax. And I, I want to know more about that, too, because it's like, why would the woman ever have to move? Especially the woman raising the kid. Like, I want to know what the logic is behind that. Like, 
wh- why give Jax that house all by himself? Like Ariana, like should stay in her house. She did not do this. But also, I just love that that she's dinged on that. And why, as she is trying to create money or like save money, like, you know, put all this money to good use, does she have to go move out and like spend money for another place? Like, why wouldn't Sandoval do that? Like, that's another thing that still doesn't make sense. Like why Lisa and her all her wisdom wouldn't say, like, come live in our guest house here at Villa Rosa, like get out of that poor woman's hair. You've done enough. Like these little things that I think are so obvious. I think we all like, go like we've been like brainwashed into thinking of like, well, yeah, why is Ariana there? Well, why wouldn't she be there? Anyways, we back at that. They're all like, take a bite of my meat. Take it. Yeah. All right. Guys night. And everybody's loving the meat. Uh, you know, everybody's just like, oh, so it's like, that's the best fucking thing I ever had in my life. Hey, when was the last time you guys spoke to Lisa? And Tom's like, I saw her yesterday, dude. She said she talked to Raquel. What? And he looks and he laughs. He's like, hey, hey, hey. come on. You didn't tell me last night. It's really weird, dude. I don't know if I can talk about this like in front of you, dude. Yeah, I mean, you don't really need to feel weird at this point. I think it's a gentleman's dinner. You know, I don't think he's going to flip the fucking Brazilian barbecue table over. And Schwartz is like, the night's still young. I have only had one coconut so far. Okay, what was your perception of what you were told? Uh, I guess she's not happy with me for some reason. Like, I haven't heard from her probably like over a month, dude. Like a word, a single word. It sucks, dude. I'm sitting here on my phone every fucking night. She doesn't call. I'm like alone. I can't fucking do this anymore, dude. And Schwartz is like, I think for your own good, you got to get out there and start dating. And they're talking to Eddie, like he's like, it's been 15 years since I was single dating around. It's been a long time. What can I do? She's obviously made her decision. She's not coming back, dude. Couldn't even send me an email for closure. I don't want to find another relationship. I think I just want female energy in my life, dude. I want what Schwartz has. I want Joe energy, dude. I love this. She's left me no option but to fuck around, dude. It's only been a month. Like, I love Schwartz giving possibly the worst advice ever of like, I think it's time for you to get back on the saddle, buddy. Like, really? Why don't you fucking be alone by yourself for another month so you don't crush anybody else out there? Like, it was, yeah, man, it's obvious. It's been three months. I think you need to get back out there. And like, couldn't even send me an email for closure, dude. Like, she said, you know, the block is a, a closure thing. And what does female energy mean? Like, I don't want to commit to you, but I want to fuck you. Anyways. Sandoval says about having a pool party. So bring your swimsuit. And then they like Schwartz offers to pay for the whole thing or they were going to do like a game. And then he's like, I'm going to pay anyway. So good for Schwartz being a nice guy. We go back. Uh, we go back to the, the girls night and she is like, I got a text from uh, Brock. He, and I said, how's it going over there? And uh, he's like, you know, that was fun. And Lala's like, yo, these four are going to be fucking besties after that night. They're going to bond tonight. And Ari's like, why would James not respect him enough to say, I'm good. I'll go hang out with my other friends. And Lala's like, because guys are different. And Ari's like, well, that's sad for guys. And I was like, it is. I feel like he feels guilty. Like he tries to explain it to me like it's nothing. And Ari's like, if he's feeling guilty, he's feeling guilty because he knows he's betraying himself. And Lala's like, no, I think everyone's worried about losing you as a friend. And then Allie's like, oh, I do think that it's both. I think there's a big layer of the you as his friend, but then also the layer of dude, don't forget that he fucked your ex fiance. Hello. And Ari's like, that mattered a lot to James up until two seconds ago. And I was like, yeah, no, it did. And Ari's like, there's no way it doesn't matter to him now. And Lala goes, that's what time does though. Time passes and healing starts. She's right. But that's not like her journey with Randall. And Lala's like, you're always going to see it differently, Ariana. And I get it. And Ariana's like, I see the truth of who Tom Sandoval is. And I was like, of course, because you were directly affected by it. Wait, what do you mean? I, I, La, Sheena's the only one that was directly affected by it. No. Anyways, uh, Sheena goes, or sorry, Ariana goes, I don't care what DJ James Kennedy does, except for the fact that I don't think that that's really who James is. And I think it's going to come to a head for him. And Lola's like, James decides and goes, kicks it with Sandoval. You know, will you, what will your stance be with James? And Ariana goes, I don't fuck with that. Very simple. So we pick back up after the commercial with this conversation. I don't fuck with that. And Lola's like, I think it's been now made apparent that if you choose Sheena to go and forgive him or whatever it is that you feel you need to do, that'll put your friendship at risk. 
And I was like, I didn't say anything about forgiveness. I'm just not going to fuck with people who are like going out to fucking dinner with him on random Wednesday nights. And she was like, this is exactly what I was afraid of. I was trying to have a conversation with Ariana tonight from Dancing with the Stars to losing Sandoval. She says it's not a talking head, but seeing her reaction to James hanging out with Sandoval, I'm just going to sit back and keep my mouth shut. Ariana's a monster. And Lala's like, if anyone understands where you're at with that level of vitriol, I do fucking get it. What I don't want to see happen is what happened to me, where I become so invested in what everyone else is doing that I can't. And I was like, I'm not. And Lala's like, but you are. You're getting very heated at James going out and having dinner. Katie goes, she said this before. Her stance didn't change. You made yourself very clear, Lala. Then Tom was like, oh, I thought time had passed. And Lala's like, if anyone gets it, I understand. I know, I know, Katie says, but I'm trying to apply the situation. And and so they're like arguing over each other. And then Lala's like, hold up. You're not going to say that I'm applying my situation because if I want to apply my situation in the reality, no one's going to like what I have to fucking say. She gets tough. Mr. Banks is like, what the fuck? And then Katie's like, oh. And Lala's like, don't fucking do that. You're not going to like what you say. Say it with your whole chest, bitch. Katie says, let it go. Flip it. Do you want to fucking talk to me like that, bitch? Lala says. And Sheena, uh, sorry, Katie's like, don't fucking talk to me like that. And then Lala goes like, disengage, disengage. You're not Meredith Marks. We know she watches all these shows either. It's like not a, like she's like thinking of slogans for shirts. Like disengage. You're talking to an actual person. Disengage, disengage. And Ariana's like, what I feel like is what Katie's basically saying. You're saying, well, this is worse for me. And Lala goes, it is way worse. I deal with it every day. Nobody knows what it's like to deal with my shitty ex. She says that in her talking ad more than I do. I'm never rid of this person that I had a child with. And this is why I know that harboring resentment towards your ex, like Ariana's doing with Sandoval, it will eat you alive. Now, but here's the difference, Lala. You will never be rid of him because you have a child with him. Ariana can be rid of him. The show is what keeps her there and she's trying to still do both, but not be there with him. And that's why it will be tough for Ariana in future seasons, depending on how she wants to deal with this. But it's very different. You know, like your situation, you are tied with a child. She doesn't have that. So she doesn't need to be around him. So like, it's such weird logic. And I feel like the comparing these things isn't helping It's because it's a guy and a girl in a shitty relationship. Like it's not one size fits all here. So Lala's like, it's like drinking the poison and expecting it to kill the other person. It doesn't, it kills you. I don't want that for my friend. And the other thing that bothers me too, it's like Lala was like popping off right and left about the Randall shit last year. Ariana hasn't had any yelling scenes with anybody about Tom. She's just had, I just don't want to fuck with people that fuck with him. Like very calmly and coolly. Not ever like tears, not ever. How dare you? Not ever any kind of like reactions like Lala would give. That's another huge difference. But they're treating it like she is just popping off right and left. They're treating it like, oh my God, she's just is consumed with this. I don't pick that vibe up when I watch this show that she is consumed with this. They're consumed with it. Lala and Sheena come off consumed with this. Anyways, Katie goes, Yours always has to be bigger and better, more important. No, it doesn't, Lala says. I wrote so hard for her. Are you crazy? And you're making me have to go on defense mode? And Katie's like, all right, then defend yourself. And I don't want to do that. With And why are you bringing it out of me? Why are you bringing it out of me? I haven't done a damn thing to you, and you know it, Katie. And then you look in, and you're like, eh. And Katie's like, it was a little much. It was a bit much. You're a bit much all the fucking time, Lala says. And Allie goes, honestly, the point of astrology is really to explain how we're all different. We all know how Lala communicates and how you communicate and how you communicate. And we're all meant to be different. And in talking head, she's like, it's like universal love. Like we can all just get along if we just understand people's birth charts. And then Lala goes, I apologize if I at any point in time have made you feel that I'm making it about me. That was never my intention. I just got heated. Do you want to see my chart? And then everybody laughs. And... You know, we in like, I will say this for Lala. She has gotten way better about backtracking immediately. Like she does backtrack pretty much within the same scene. She did it last week in the Sandoval scene on the boat, but it is still very frustrating because she is just this anger. And it's like, Katie is standing her ground. 
And like the, the disengaged shit, it's like theatrics that we don't need. It's like, it reminds me of when Lala was coming down on Rachel a couple seasons ago of like, Oh, uh, Mike, Michael Vick, barking dog. Blah, 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 blah. You know, it's like that shit at the end of the day, as you get older, isn't that great. It's not, it's like good for TV, but it's not something to be proud of in your life. Like that's the fucking real poison. So I think it is interesting, but these people are also pressed. Also, uh, I saw this on a podcast or Vanderpod recaps when I was reading the recap from Lala and she always, she was talking about herself in terms of her anger and saying like, I can't help when that fire in my chest starts coming. I have this fire in my chest and it makes it almost sound like it's like this mythical, like almost like this Indian lore of like girl with fire in her chest. It's like, no, you just have anger issues. Like it's not some big, like, like, like stop. It's not, there's no nothing like romantic about it. There's nothing uh, mythic about it. It's just anger shit that you need to deal with. Like it's, it doesn't move anything forward. It makes for some good scenes, but at the same time, I just feel like Salala will go like every which way in terms of opinion. And she's one of the best communicators this show has, but sometimes she like, I mean, to me, you know, they always like harp on Sheena being a flip flopper, but I feel like Lala is the same way, but Lala doesn't even really have a horse in this race. Sometimes Anywho, folks, I'm exhausted. You can, you can, you can tell. I, I'll get to the mid-season trailer in the Valley tomorrow. I'll add it to the Beverly Hills recap because there wasn't tons to talk about with that. But this went way over. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. If not, I'm sorry it went so long. Um, but man, what a frustrating episode. I hope you found some laughs in there. But uh, have a great Thursday, you guys. And I will talk to you on Friday. And then on Friday, I will be doing my Patreon episode. So if you want more, patreon.com forward slash so bad it's good. And uh, if you could, please give it a sec to give it a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And whew, I am beat. Let me know tomorrow if this just sucked or not. I have a feeling this episode sucked. Uh, so I, I'm sorry. I've, I'm having a uh, confidence crisis here. Bye, guys.